Oh my God, welcome. Welcome one and all, and I might say all. Uh, this, is a, this is a special episode uh, of, of everything. Um, Hi, I'm John Baltina. I run Avrox Press Fist, where we play the Expanse role-playing game forever. Um, and I got approached last year by the people of Green Ronin and the Expanse RPG fan community. And they were doing their, the community was doing their one page fan jam and everyone turned in some adventures. They put out this cool publication. They voted on it to see which one was like the, the, the coolest one. And their prize was apparently me. I'm sorry, it could have been better. You know, I, already, I, I apologize ahead of time. Um, but, um, I, so the prize was I run it and the Green Ronin folks play with like the head developers, the president, all these people. And we brought in a whole crew of folks to play uh a special episode uh called those who trust um so i don't know what else to say besides that uh but we're gonna play this for about three hours or so like that hang out here green room's been kind enough to host it on their channel it's on my channel too over on twitch so wherever you want to watch it we just want to get exposure and show off the fan community there'll be some links in the chat you can uh you can on, on my twitch at least you can see them on the screen to uh, engage in and see if you want to follow up and check out this adventure uh it's free uh, so you can't beat it, so take two of them. But I'd like to start off by uh, introducing a little bit about this whole thing uh, with our good friend Odin. Uh, Odin, uh, tell us about the Expanse fan community, RPG fan community. Well, um, so during the Kickstarter of this uh, game uh, several years ago, I thought we needed somewhere to hang out. That was not the Kickstarter sort of comment section, because that's not very good um, for sort of long-winded communication and discussion about rules and questions in the future so i just yeah i set up a facebook group and that grew and then as you do when you play games you want more stuff and you want cool stuff and lo there are loads of community resources that can be made by a community so i decided to run a one page adventure jam and the first time i would say it was quite of a success and then i decided to continue i think uh, i think that's sort of sufficient it's uh, i set up a website in after a while and it's mainly to create fun times for us all. <laughs> <laughs> I, there are many websites out there that create fun times. Um, so, uh, but this year, our uh, the the community chose, and we chose uh, Guillermo down there at the very bottom. Uh, adventure called "Those Who Trust." Uh, Guillermo, would you like to say a few words without spoiling the adventure for those at home and those that are playing? Just say a few words about your inspiration. Uh, just something to say about it. Yeah, uh, it was a challenge. I actually almost didn't write this adventure. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, and, and I, I was surprised then, right? Uh, but the deck space is always about people trying to live their normal lives uh, with their normal activity uh, while something strange is happening. Uh, so that's the, the core concept uh, I take when I write adventures. Mm. Uh, so this, this, this one isn't different. People are settling in a new world beyond the ring, uh, where they're, uh, how may I say, <laughs> trying to live their normal life. Uh, some, something weird is found. Uh, and in the end, it's all about uh, human behavior. It's the social conflicts that arise from moments of tension, uh, from the desire for power. And that's it. I. I feel like you 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 may have seen my show where where we call it schlubs in space because uh, you described schlubs in space quite nicely there actually just the common <laughs> folks is hanging out and everything like that too. Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. Well, uh, without further ado, I want to have everyone introduce themselves here. Uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna do uh, Brady Bunch order. Uh, so we'll start with uh, our good friend Chris off to this side here. Chris, uh, tell us who you are, what you do, and where folks can find you. Real me, not my character, right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Chris Pramus, uh, founder and president of Green Ronin Publishing. Uh, I am at Pramus on Twitter, also on Facebook. Um, and, uh, you know, I run Green Ronin with my, my partners in Mateen, and uh, we make role playing games like this one. Okay. Uh, going next, uh, let's go to Ian. Hi, my name is Ian Lemke. Uh, I'm currently the developer for uh, the Expanse role-playing game and Fantasy Age Second Edition. Uh, 
at Green Ronin. Um, and I'm playing Dayton Altman, the mechanic, on our lovely ship here today. I'm excited to be here today. Oh, thank you, Ian. I get to play. You get to play, yeah. <laughs> no, you're forever game master. Uh, and actually, actually, enough, like the last time I got to play The Expanse was uh, excellent. I think you're the only person I've ever had game master for me, honestly, of The Expanse. So yep. this is it's good, uh, good, good role reversal today. Yep. Um, let's go to uh, Gerne. We, we heard a little bit from you, but this, this, tell us about uh, who you are, what you do, where they can find you. Hey, uh, I'm Guilherme Cao. I'm Brazilian. Uh, I'm an illustrator, designer, and researcher. I'm actually uh, I'm a PhD student of design. Hmm. Uh, and I research in children's books on based on information design for novel uh, It's a what a challenge. <laughs> uh, so I'm a game master for the expense. Uh, I have a group running for over a year now. Oh, wow. We have a session tomorrow, actually. Uh, and that's it. Uh, this is the second adventure I've written. Mm -hmm. uh, this community is awesome. Uh, really, really friendly people. Uh, really safe place to be. Uh, those uh, adventure jams and uh, community resources uh, what people have built is great, and it's some, something truly really unique. We we only found in the RPG community. All right, yeah, no, thank you for all that. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's that's once again. This was the super collaborative community thing. Like this goes beyond yeah. our normal community, and that's actually what's really interesting. There's like I think all of us are from four different countries here, so like this is like a super international game, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm kind of digging <laughs> that too. So. Um, but uh, let's go. Let's move it up to uh, way north. Uh, our friend uh, Merrick, uh, tell us who you are, what you do, and where they can find you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I'm Canadian. That's uh, there's there's our, our extra right there. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, an Expanse game master as well. I run uh, Hellbreakers. Um, we play it every second Monday on Twitch.tv slash Massive Damage Adventures, and it is. You know, I really wanted to do uh, Killjoys meets Cowboy Bebop in The Expanse. So, you know, bounty hunting and being pretty silly. And you can catch all our uh, our VODs and stuff at uh, YouTube on uh, Sky Hammer Press and stuff. And yeah, just uh, love The Expanse, huge fan, and um, love RPGs. Happy to be here as well to play. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I, I kind of call like Hellbreakers is what we like in, in my in our group. We kind of call Hellbreakers our sister show. Uh, they're kind of we're, we're kind of going parallel. Kind. Oh well, you know. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Merrick. It means a lot to have you here. Um, <laughs> up, our, one of our, our our head of one of the the expanse RPG community, we have Odin. Odin, tell us about who you are, what you do, and where folks can find you. M muted, but uh, you can. Uh, you can find me on the west coast of Norway uh, in a little town called Bergen. Um, I'm a, yeah, I'm a researcher. Work at university, uh, and I'm a, I've been a game master for about thirty years, running D and D and everything from that to like yeah, expanse, almost everything. I I live and breathe for this hobby, but I can't do turn it into my main vocation. You're probably happier. <laughs> <laughs> well, academia it's all what it's cracked up to be. But it's yeah. it's true. It's very true. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and finally, we got Steve. Uh, tell us about who you are, what you do, and where they can find you. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Kenson. Uh, I am a staff designer uh, with Green Renine. I was the lead designer on uh, the Expanse RPG. Uh, so everything that's wrong with it is my fault, mm. uh, and everything that's good about it has been stuff that Ian has fixed since I handed it over to him. <laughs> <laughs> Disagree. That's so, okay. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at S. Kenson, um, where I'm mostly ranting about things, um, and I have a website at stevekenson.com, which I occasionally update with mostly various superhero things that I'm working on. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you, everyone, again. Um, and I just just introduce our uh, seventh player today is the Verde Libre, the freighter mm -hmm. that the crew is manning. I made up a little logo you can see on everyone's name tags. Uh, I try to match the green Ronin colors for it too. Just as 
my pathetic attempt at like a reference, but here it is. Uh, so, you know, deal with it because um, we're live. And, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'll have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up the game here and then we're going to get dive uh, right into it. Uh, but the last thing to say is I run Abrax Precipice. Uh, we're an expanse uh, live stream. We've been playing now for almost two years. We have lots of guests on the show. Uh, we have a one giant campaign. I think we're at like 160 plus hours total, including our bonus episodes. Uh, yeah, Steve. Steve's like, how did you get that much value out of my book? Um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, he's like, you know, uh, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. And I, I've had so much fun bringing people in. There's all kinds of expanse geeks out there. Um, and so you can tune and check out our, our stuff like that too. But we have a very large backlog of episodes. So, and you can dive in at different points um, and the like. So without further ado, let's begin those who trust. Bum, bum, bum. I don't have a theme song. I couldn't afford it. Sorry. Um, Everybody dance. Pretend that there's theme music playing. There is. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, this uh, it's been about uh, it's been about three years, about, about about four years since the free Navy conflict has ended. Um, the ring gates are open. There's worlds. Um, the uh, <clears throat> transport union uh, <laughs> has control over, over things, uh, making sure Things go through and everything. You uh, people contract them as freelancers. There's people that are uh, bound up into it. They're like lifers with it. Um, but things are peaceful. Uh, the only conflicts that really happen are when people r run a gate, like which is worse than running a stop sign. If you read the books, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> uh, it's like reading a stop sign, but you cause reality to class around people for them. Um, and uh, but they slowly kind of. Things have been very steady. There's no real wars. There's maybe some pirate conflicts here and there, minor stuff on the fringes with 1,300 worlds. It, it's it's hard to control everything. But uh, the trade unions do their best job. Um, the Verde Libre, which is a freighter, uh, originating, uh, it, it's it's a it's been around for a while. Uh, it's it's got a, a few decades under its under its belt. Uh, is uh, moving medical supplies primarily and some fuel pellets for fusion drives um to a new call a newer colony it's been around now for about like they're about mm -hmm. 10 years into it or so they were isolated during the free navy conflict but managed to uh get free by the way guys, uh, uh, uh spoiler alert if you haven't read the first six books guys i'm sorry like where it's been a year <laughs> you you have i feel like there's a fair shot so it's like it's hard to not run this game without spoilers guys um uh so i just want to be clear awesome. on that i probably should have said that ahead of time but uh, welcome to the expanse. Um, and uh, you guys are approaching through the system. This system is called the um, it is the Hermes Star System. Mm. The Hermes Star System. This is actually one of the few liberties I took with Guillermo's uh, adventure. It changed the name, <laughs> but um, the the Hermes Star System. And you're going to a planet called New Luna. New Luna is almost the size of Earth. Um, and but it's very close to this red dwarf star, very small star. Um, I mean, it's really close to the star, but the star doesn't burn very hot. Uh, the planet's okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's very moon-like on its surface, um, and it's been primarily settled by Luna-based Earthers. Um, and they're uh, they're trying to get agriculture. That's what you kind of know about. They're trying to get agriculture working on the on the station. Um, they're doing okay with it, but it's not great. Um, but let me go ahead and um, as you approach the planet, uh, let me go ahead and let your captain speak to you. Um, captain uh, Beckett Davis on the bridge of the Verde Libre, uh, a ship that you are uh, have been hired to run. The, the, the com company owns it, uh, some third party who no one really cares about because um, I didn't name them, uh, is, is, is cruising towards it. Uh, and you're getting within range to set of docking uh, situations, everything. And you can dock to the planet. The planet has no atmosphere. It doesn't have mm -hmm. the builder's bias. Uh, there's another planet in the system that has the builder's bias, but this one doesn't. Uh, and that one's had some problems with some sort of toxic gas on the cover on on the surface. So it has an atmosphere, but the um, it's not exactly hospitable to everybody right now. Where this one's a little bit easier to manage. Um, but yeah, you uh, you're on the approach, uh, Captain Davis. So uh... all right. Um, so. Uh, Captain Davis is uh, sort of a mid-50s belter, uh, tall, narrow frame, but like, you know, a little bit of that 
hot belly of not taking care of himself all that much anymore, covered in tattoos, mostly like animal designs and so on. And he'll be leaning back in his chair and uh, just like go over the, the communication to everybody and say, all right, well, we are, we are approaching the planet. Everybody at your stations, you sure? You good? All right, call in if you need anything. And then he like flicks it off, turns over to uh, to Ethan, the pilot, and says, mm -hmm. "You got this, right? I can uh, take a nap." Captain, this girl could pilot herself in if we wanted, but you know, I'm not trying to talk myself out of a job or anything. Oh, that's why I love you. <laughs> You've got this. You, we, it's, it's all, all on the schedule. You got all it covered. Good. Oh, good, good, good. Um. Just bring us in. We'll get the unloader in, uh, done. We'll get the uh, the machines to pull out the pellets out. Um, oh, we should check in. You want to get on the comms and talk to the uh, the planet, or should I do that? Sure thing, Captain. They're actually yeah. hailing. They're actually hailing you. Yeah. Oh, and he, he like wipes uh, like something off of the console. I I didn't see it. Uh, <laughs> it, the light, it, it was covered. And he flicks the thing. <laughs> um, this is the Verde Libre. Yes. The, uh, you, get a, you get a call in, you hear a, a, an Earther saying, uh, yes, greeting, uh, Verde Libre, uh, you are clear for birth number six. Uh, please use the following approach. Um, they're basically asking you to you know, avoid colliding with their satellites and other things. Um, and it's a pretty basic approach. Ethan, you, mm -hmm. you, you, the stuff's feeding through your console, no problem. And it's it's a milk run of a docking job. Um, yep. So it's, it's no rolls, none of that crap. Um, but you do let everybody know that you're getting ready to dock. Uh, the planet does have uh, about four fifths, so 0.8 uh, Gs of gravity. Mm -hmm. um, but the ship can, um, because you have access to the Epstein, you don't have to worry about you know setting the atmosphere on fire. Fire. Uh, <laughs> you're <laughs> melting everyone with you. You're, you're okay to go. Acknowledged, New Luna Command. We are on approach. And and he'll do like a uh, like a belter. Um, well done. Good job. And lean back in his chair. <laughs> uh, extremely basic task. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So uh, your your security chimes in there, uh, Captain Davis. Uh, your security of Chandra uh, breaks in there, congratulating you on your orders. Um, does uh, does anyone else on the ship have anything they want to do before the docking procedures? And you guys got like a few hours before the before you dock it. It's it's mm -hmm. it's, it's an approach. Space is big. <laughs> I'll go around and and give. I, I, Dayton keeps a lot of plants. Uh, down in the machine mm -hmm. shop and such uh, to help support the life support system as much as possible. Go around and give the plants a little spritz before we, yeah. Yep. Uh, assuming we're uh, we're still under drive, if we're at, if we're at G, it, it, uh, you you're at like a lower G. You're at like a point three. So I mean, you got some gravity. Right. Yeah, that's we're enough to give them a little decelerating a little. Yeah. Right. I don't want to like leave. You know. Part uh, I'm gonna there. you know Dayton. I'm gonna have you make a current affairs test. I feel like we got to use this. You know, Chris came up with this great system. We should use it once in a while. Uh, All right. Why don't you roll three d six for me and give me a current affairs test, intelligence, current affairs? And this we'll is the fringer. Uh, no, this isn't, this isn't information about you. This is information about others. Oh, oh, oh I see. <laughs> current affairs. Yeah, current affairs be... is my is my is what I call the metagame skill in the experience. <laughs> <So, laughs> it, it helps a lot. Is um, that intelligence? That's intelligence. Yes. Okay. Yep. Since you're interested in plants, we're gonna we're gonna line this up here. Two fours and a three. All right. Two fours and a three. Oh, okay, that's pretty Plus good. Four. Plus four. Oh, okay, yeah, so, you're, you're smart. So yeah, so you you go in and um, you you know a little bit about the mission here and who's on this planet. And the mission you've heard, um, Dayton, is that you're picking up uh, these two scientists. Uh, one of them's Aram Otto. Aram okay. Otto, you, you you actually know of because they are like kind of a premier soil scientist oh. uh, on the frontier. Um, they're up there with guys like Yakiv Botenko and everything like that too. Um, they're, not, they're not as good looking as Yakiv Botenko though. Um, sorry, I have, to, I have to make references to him all the time. Um, but yeah, and he's actually one of the people you're picking up. Okay. Um, so you're gonna have time to talk to like the soil scientist guy on this ship for a few weeks, uh, probably whether or not he likes it. 
Right. Cool. That's awesome. I, because despite the fact that uh, Dayton likes to grow plants, he's actually really bad at it. So <laughs> get tips for someone to support it would be good. To, you know, get some, some advice. Pointers. Good. Yeah, some pointers. I keep on killing these things. How do I stop? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, let's go ahead and hear uh, from anyone else on the crew. We have uh, Cornelius and Sebastian. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to do before docking or the approach? I, I, I'm the inspector, so I think I should maybe inspect our cargo one final time. For uh, any give me a contraband. give me a perception searching test. Yeah. So that would be two thousand so three. Oh, that's good. So, so, so plus three, so that's a sixteen. I mean, you guys told me you're going to cheat on your rolls, but you didn't have to. Um, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, you uh, uh, you go and check the cargo. You check it strapped down. Stuff's going good. Um, it looks pretty solid. Everything's there. Um, it's a pretty high-end uh, supply run you're making, um, and uh, but you have all your mag lifts, your mechs ready to move everything. But everything's secure. Uh, you do. The captain's kind of a. He's kind of loose. It feels like he, he likes to kick his feet up. Uh, you're a little more. Uh, you get the Martian in you get gets up there once in a while. You know, make sure stuff doesn't blow out and die. Um, so you're, you, you, but you, 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 you kind of, you kind of, you're the one that tightens the knot of the ship. He tied it, but you're the one that tightens the knot. Does that make sense? Yeah. A little bit? Okay. <laughs> uh, Sebastian, uh, our, our ship's chaplain or, our morale officer, if you will. Uh, what, what's, uh, what's going on with you on the approach? So, uh, I'm helping Cornelius inspect the, the cargo. And what I, I guess he expected that 80% of that. <laughs> Uh, but when he's finished, I lay on, on the side, open my uh, hand terminal, and project the hologram for, of a book, and I call the crew on the uh, world communication channel and say, uh, well, before we dock, I guess we should share some words from the Church of Eros, the Church of the proto -Monitor. What now? Do you accepting so, of that or not? So, so you guys know that Sebastian. I wasn't sure if you're public. Sebastian is a member of the Church of Eros, which is kind of a a, a fact, a, a religious faction, primarily of Belters that believe there's like some sort of liberation that can be achieved through the builder technology, um, the stuff on these worlds, finding that or kind of these sacred sites um, and the like, and. Um, but to say, but that is to say, like Sebastian, you do, you do as a chaplain, you approach all religions and, and help people pivot through their own little crises when they need to. But, um, but yeah, you you do give us, you're welcome to give a sermon, um, or uh, those that are willing to hear you out and everything like that too. So, because okay. uh, uh, Sebastian is a kind of a guy, uh, a little muscular, so so they're strong. Mm -hmm. Not the kind of guy you you think is a religious 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 one. Uh, but he was in. <laughs> so, yeah, I opened the photograph view of the book and say, uh, well, for the doc, we, uh, we should read a passage from the book of the Church of Eros. And it doesn't matter if people agree with, with it or not. For the proton molecule might assimilate us all, as it did with the people of Eros. For the proton molecule, there are no inners, there are no belters. We are only one within the proton molecule. And we still don't know what it might bring us, but we're going to trust it. Because the proton molecule, the friendly, from inners and deltas, the proton molecule sees us as equal. And that's how we should see us all, even especially people on this planet. That's it. Okay. So you hear another one of Sebastian's little things. Uh, let's go ahead and hear from our captain first. Uh, the captain will go over the calm and say, Amen, Sebastian. Good words. Everybody, keep that in mind. And he flicks it off and he turns over to Ethan and says, I don't know. That, I, um, 
You He's heard the so man, good. Captain. All equal within the proto molecule. One He's... giant protein slurry. He's... <laughs> He's so good when you have a problem on the ship and we need someone to be impartial both sides. And then he speaks from this book and I, mm, oh, well. Captain, good makes up for a lot of crazy. Truth. Uh, Dayton, you have something, something to contribute? Unmute. Mute. Uh, I'm flipping on some uh, retro belter banger music mm. of the stuff from Eros that yeah. was recorded <laughs> and playing it down in engineering. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah. a hymnal to them. It's like, you know, the... Oh, the no, course. this isn't meant... That I, <laughs> that's not how I mean it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> a little derogatory? Okay. Do you remember the screaming? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly... Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, right. I figure they won't be mad about that. There, there's know? like, <laughs> as far as you guys know on the ship, there's like there's like only one or two other people that, out of like the 50 other people on the ship that kind of buy into that, but it's not a very popular religion, but it, it is a position some take. But as far as everyone knows, the proto molecule is gone. There is no, it doesn't, it doesn't, everything's dead on these planets. So it's, it's all gone. Um, all right. Uh, the approach happens, uh, Ethan, um, everyone straps in uh, and it, it's a pretty easy approach to the, to the, um, uh, the, the birth and you're on birth number four. So really easy mm -hmm. to do. Uh, not no role. The ship does it mostly. You do the little tweaks here. Your little, if you want to do a flourish or something, I don't know what you're, what you're, how you pilot, but um, uh, fly casual. Uh, mm -hmm. No and, uh, need for it to be fancy. But you dock in and uh, you get the confirmation that the airlocks are, are clicking over. Um, it actually they actually lock on uh, a crew airlock and then a um, a cargo airlock that's much mm -hmm. larger to yep. bring in. Um, and they have it set up so they can actually pull, uh, they have a cranes that can pull off the, the materials and everything like that too. So um, it shouldn't be a problem here. And pretty much at this point, Ethan, your, your job is done. Yep. Um, until down. you got some, you got some shore leave, you got some time off here, all that kind of stuff here. Uh, most of you don't have much to do. No one here is payload. Um, so <laughs> that, that's a good sign. Uh, thank you for no one taking my payload character. Um, but, uh, you guys are, you guys are, uh, captain, you're docked up. Things look good. Um, you get a, a message from their dock master. Uh, the dock master's name is Dinah Asp. Dinah Asp. Um, and this, uh, earther woman comes on the comms and says, uh, all right, so, um, you're all docked up. No problem. Uh, we'd like you to enjoy new Luna. Uh, feel free to come on to the station. Uh, entertainment's here. You can take a look around and, and uh, have a good time there, Captain. Um, if you need anything, here's my contact information. But we'll take care of uh, your ship. And, and you have like, a crew of like 10 people staying on the ship, uh, kind of circulating mm -hmm. out in, in and out. But you're seeing your crew here. They need some time off. <laughs> what would... We need something new for food. Uh, yeah. mm. Ask, what, what, um, what restaurants do you recommend? You have anything nice on station? Uh, so that's actually what we've been working on. We were hoping uh, the soil samples we send back to you can uh, shed some light on what we can grow here. Um, but we have one. Uh, we have one called the Original Pond, uh, named for the first uh, signs of water we found on the on the uh, the planet face. It's, it's okay. They, um, I I would. It tastes good. Uh, just close your eyes. All right. I've, well, I've heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beggars can't be choosers. If we have any troubles, we will get in touch. Absolutely. Thank you so much, New Luna Control. Yes, and uh, feel free. Uh, you're actually on contact too to talk to um, uh, the director of this of the the colony, uh, which is uh, Sylvia Sesta. I'll put mm -hmm. that in the chat for you, so you don't have to I'll throw a spell in here. Um, Sylvia Sesta is your director. Okay, so we got to go talk to her first? No, but you have access to talk to them um, if oh, you want to okay. consult about anything specific. And there's also an assistant director. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, like different, there's different portions of whatever you're looking for here. Uh, when but are you he, picking up our passengers? Uh, pass, we, pass, we, uh, we have the whole day to ourselves. We pick up the passengers tomorrow, then we load on the soil samples, and we leave after that. All right, let's make the most of it then. Yeah, um, I think Captain Davis would probably send, uh, you know, a message on the hand terminal to these other people on the call and say, uh, 
dinner is on him at uh, the original pond. <laughs> what swims in the pond, I wonder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, you you guys disembark. Uh, a, few, a lot of the other crew are kind of eager to go off and check out everything like that too. Um, being an Earth, uh, being an Earth based like a Luna based colony, this uh, mm-hmm. which tends to be a, a people that are more wealthy. Um, the the colony uh, doesn't really it doesn't have quite the um, the the loose flavors we'll say of uh, Belter places like Theory Station or something like that is a little more conservative um, in terms of like they're not that stuff's illegal but it's like they don't have as much variety we'll say mm-hmm. um, but they seem much more oriented towards um, their mining operations here that's their primary goal is their mining operations um, is there anyone here that wants to do any kind of research or know anything about the station or its history before they they keep on going or um... Actually, I'm gonna have Sebastian. Sebastian, make a uh, give me an intelligence current affairs test, and I'll give you a plus. I'll give you, you can. Uh, I'll give you a plus two on this because of your uh, religious affiliation. Okay, uh, I don't have this focus, so it's just intelligence, right? You got it. Yep. What did you get? And get an extra plus two on it. Uh, then fifteen. Oh, you're fine. Sixteen. Uh, 18. So what you do know about this, one thing that was really interesting about this mission for you, uh, Sebastian, is that this planet has a pre, as they were mining into it, they found a pretty exhaustive uh, series of tunnels by the builder tech. There was no machinery in it, but there's a pretty, um, it goes down deep. They don't know how deep it goes in the planet, but they know it goes into it a fair ways. Um, and you haven't heard anything about it for you know a few months, but rumor has it that like their that might be their main focus is exploring these ruins. Um, so you you could view this perhaps as a <clears throat> pilgrimage of some sort, if you will, or um, <laughs> you know, but they do have stuff going on like that. Um, and, and and supposedly there is a uh, the. It's not the Church of Eros, but there is supposedly maybe a um, group of, we'll say, enthusiasts, organized enthusiasts, that are trying to set up a 403. Uh, <laughs> so trying to set up like a, oh, yeah, a church, yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, I, that, I, that's, a, that's an American tax reference. I'm sorry, I probably should. Yeah, I was like, that. I don't actually <laughs> know what that is. So, yeah, for, 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 for a four way non profit, yeah, sorry, whatever. But, but yeah, so, they, so they're all, they're, you're good, and, and there's something like that going on there. All right. Um, next up, uh, anyone else have anything they want to check about the station? Uh, I just wanted to know what the security arrangements are. Like, how big of a team do they have? And, uh, so you you pulled the information. You got contact in your your dossier of the station. This is real straightforward information. Uh, their security chief is a Martian, which is actually one of the, like there's there's mostly uh, Luna based Earthers on the station. It's like eighty percent Earthers, um, but it's one named uh, Joel Cody, Captain Joel Cody. I'm realizing how I don't like saying that name, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's hard. It's kind of weird to say, but Joel Cody is uh, Captain Cody, is our uh, Martian uh, chief of security on the station. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, security on the station right now, they're they're so far out. So one of the problems is they're really close to their sun. They're like only um, like a quarter of an AU from mm-hmm. their sun. So like they're way far out from their gate. So they don't really deal with security issues. Like uh, it would be a very long burn. Um, they don't have like an orbital. Um, they have like one attack ship. That's about it. But it's not like heavily. It's not a heavy fighter. Um, mm-hmm. It's more of something they can like pursue someone, chase them down if they're a problem. Mm-hmm. But um, and that's kept um, in orbit. And the the the, the world has uh, no moons, so no. But you know, I mean, if you were a pirate, you'd want to hit them what way way closer to the gate than come yeah. all the way out to this planet. I mean, I think oh, theoretically. Yeah. It was more the what's on the planet itself, because mm-hmm. I, yeah. I think as we all know, um, going going through the gates isn't always fun. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. You said conservative. Does that mean like no no casinos, no bars? Uh, they do no have brothels. casino. They they don't have. Uh, they have a limited number. Of, they only have like one brothel. Um, and then they have, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, there's always a line on the door. 
And uh, it's more, more looking like casinos. <laughs> casino wise, no, they don't. They don't really have gambling on here. Um, it's more. There's a lot more entertainment, which is like tends to be a lot more. Uh, they bring in a lot of like culture elements from Earth, so like music and theater is much more popular here. Um, the PBS Planet. The PBS Planet. Yes, they they've been uh, brought to you by viewers like you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're wow. uh, yeah, they're they're much more. Um, it isn't that they like like. like they have like a moral objection to it. It's just not, de- that's not right. a way they developed economically. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm excited about the scientists, but the shore leave sounds boring. That's about all, all right. the excitement you're going to get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, oh, but by the way, I forgot everybody has a plus one temporary bonus to their income just for uh, this mission that you, then you get an extra, you get more income once the mission's finished, once you return these soil samples. So uh, uh, don't worry about that too much, but um, in case you want to gamble it away. All right. Um, I can't. <laughs> right? Where? <laughs> yeah. may, I, may I roll something to understand the um, essay, the overall mood of the, the colony? Yeah, sure. If you want to give me like a, um, an empathy check or like a perception empathy would be good or intuition even, but a perception check of one of those two would be good to take take a survey yeah. of the place. Only perception. Okay, cool. It's... Uh, uh, Eight and uh, perception nine. Nine, okay. Um, yeah. Nine total. You kind of get off, and, and you people are just kind of working. Uh, as far as where you guys are on the docks, you haven't gone to like the Medina where they have like the shops and they have like the the bars and, and um, the uh, the pond as it was called the, the original pond. Um, but a lot of it, you do see stuff moving here and there. Uh, it looks like they're mostly um, right now exporting ore. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're nowhere near capacity. It seems like they could have, they could bring up more, based on the size of the planet, what you've seen from the outside, they could be bringing up more ore, but somehow like the ore isn't um, a priority right now is what you kind of catch. We'll go, we'll go with that. Mm. All right. It reminds me a lot of when I used to do the North America to Luna run. It actually sure does. Enough. So boring. Yeah, that would be yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a safe place, away, far away from the ring. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They promised that the food was o- okay. We just, you know, anybody bring some hot sauce or something. <laughs> yes, Lu- Lu- uh, Luna, uh, Luna dwellers do have a uh, delicate palate. Oh. Uh, that's, my, that's my expanse stereotype. I'm, in, I'm interjecting uh, <laughs> into the expanse. Thanks. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, your, your crew starts unloading all the medical supplies. People come up and meet. Um, you actually get met by, um, uh, you do get make contact, but it's pretty easy here. Uh, Nico de Lima, who is their, uh, their chief R and D member, uh, who also oversees the hospital on the station is there. You can talk to them, but you guys have run the station at this point. Uh, you have the first, this first night's free. They've, uh, arranged, um, a hotel for you guys. So you guys have actual like decent rooms. They're not huge rooms. They're not like, they're not like uh, the beehive hotels where it's like you, you go into a tube and you sleep. It's a little, it's mm-hmm. it's like maybe like, uh, you know, eight times bigger than that. <laughs> so you can actually stand up and walk around. Uh, there, is shared, there is shared bathrooms, but uh, you do have like your own little uh, room for the night. Kind of like a sleeper car from like a, a, a train, if you will. Mm. So um, anything uh, before the dinner or? All right, dinner occurs. Let's see what's what? Um, you guys show up to the uh, the original pond. Uh, you're actually met there uh, by um, uh, as you guys kind of go to sit down and, and everything like that to a uh, the the Matra D or what passed for a Matra D here in space uh, approaches you, Captain, and says, uh, "Excuse me, uh, uh, Captain Davis. Um, uh, we, we had a request of a there was a guest that would like to join your dinner party tonight." Oh? Uh, yes, we, uh, our uh, assistant the, assistant director, uh, Tim Kestel, would like to join you. Well, I always say the more the merrier. Hmm. Hmm. Bring him in. Sure, we we'll meet him. And this this man comes approach, Arthur, uh, got kind of a mid-toned skin, uh, shaved head, uh, approaches and, and says, goes to shake your hand. He goes, uh, Captain uh, Davis. And he shakes his hand exactly. warmly. Okay. It says, you got to grasp me. He says, that's excellent to have you all here. Uh, your, your delivery here is, uh, will be invaluable to making sure to keep the safety of our colony. 
Um, I was wondering if uh, uh, joining you tonight would be okay? Absolutely. Uh, it is our pleasure, and we are so happy to be in your system. Very, Excellent. very nice Excellent. place you have put together for your people. Excellent. Cornelius. So, could I, what kind of vibe do I get off him? Uh, give me an empathy test. Uh, perception could empathy. Use into, Intuition's fine too, yeah. Intuition's yeah, fine. Right, because I got that focus. Yeah. Yeah, that's, all right, so that's six, three, two. So uh, 11. That's 11, wouldn't it? Yes, that's 11 plus 10 plus 5, so 7, uh, 16. Okay. So he goes, uh, you kind of get a vibe that he's he's a politician, um, and he's looking to do a little crowd work, get you guys a appeal. If you guys kind of think, um, I mean, I'd maybe try to sell you something tonight. Might be a, not necessarily a thing, but like an idea, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or sell the colony, promote the colony, something like that. There's, there's something, there's some agenda there. Um, does uh, does Chandra, our, our chief of security, have any objection to uh, <laughs> Assistant Director Kestel? Oh, not at all. I'd be very interested in okay. talking to the director. All right. So he sits down with everybody, and uh, you know, and he may, he actually orders. He actually like says, let, let me get you our our, our first. Uh, let me let me order some special wine. He actually orders a bottle of like wine, actual real like Ganymede wine. Um, some of uh, some real real stuff here, not something cheap. Um, and uh, the, the 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 wine waiter pours it up for everyone. It's a nice place. Um, and uh, he says, uh, "So, um, tell me, how's uh, how's transport? How's working for the uh, transport union?" And uh, Beckett kind of just looks around the table and says, "It's a good business. Everybody, you get paid on time. Not too much asked." We get to see this beautiful universe. And people are always happy when you bring them stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I, or take true, stuff away. True, true words. I, I saw your uh, manifest that you're bringing, you're taking some more soil samples back. I'm um, seeing what the composites are. That, that's a magnificent contribution. Um, we're really hoping the work that um, Dr. Otto and Dr. Kale are doing will, will benefit the colony in a long in the long term. Unfortunately, we don't have the capabilities to do full analysis here. We weren't really built for that. Um, so, uh, but uh, you know, this, uh, part of why I'm here tonight is I'm interested in getting, hearing a little, how do I put this? Uh, I don't, I don't want this to sound offensive, but more, a more diverse perspective of, of the trade, the transport union and what's going on. And uh, so as, as you can see, and you can clearly see it around him, like most people here are from Luna or Earthers. Um, but we'd like to hear from some of the people that have seen uh, other corners, uh, experienced different uh, walks of life. Because um, we'd like to, how do I put this? We'd, we'd like to make New Luna a more welcoming place than, well, Luna was. That wouldn't be hard. <laughs> do, do, you, do you snicker? I say that wouldn't be hard. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he says, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, uh, uh, it, it's Dayton, and he sees yeah. like, he sees the name on your jumpsuit. Uh, he goes, um, "You're you're from Earth." Uh, I mean, Luna. Have... Well, I went to University of Luna too. So, oh, yeah. oh, excellent. What uh, what'd you major in? Uh, technology. I didn't finish, but <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Well, there, there is there is much education out there in the stars. Um, but uh, Captain Captain Davis, uh, Freeze. Uh, uh, Oh, it's uh, Dukas. Was it? Did I say it right? Dukas. Okay. Uh, and e and even our friend here, Savari from from Mars. I mean, what kind of perspectives do do you bring or, or think about a place? This place is on the frontier and the transport union's role in it. Well, there's uh, a lot of bad blood still after what we all went through with free navy conflict and <laughs> and everything. Uh, so the hope is that some of these colonies can start, you know, chart a new course that is not going to bring all that baggage with them, you know. Mm. I have people on the belt who, <laughs> they don't like me. They're probably not ever going to like me, but when I come to a new place, you don't have that prejudice. Mm, mm, true words, true words. Um, 
I, I, but diversity of perspective isn't just from what gravity we grew up in, but it's also even ideas of religion. Um, I noticed, uh, Sebastian, you, oh, you... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Beckett will, will take a big drink of the, of the, of the good wine. <laughs> Do you have anything stronger than wine? <laughs> oh, yeah, they have like a, I mean, they have like a vodka because they are growing, they can grow potatoes here right now. So they have a vodka that's ready if you want to, if you want to get like a... Ace. All right. So yeah, they, they bring out a ball of vodka. This one's on the captain though. Um, yeah, and Captain's fine with that. Uh, so, so Sebastian, uh, I, I heard, um, I saw, and he looks, at, he points like a little like pin you have on your on your on your jumpsuit that indicates your affiliation. Um, says, uh, what? Um, tell me about this. Uh, I, I've, I've seen this before. The the Church of Eros. Tell me about this. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I see you are a man of culture. Uh, that's in the Church of Eros, and um, it knows no winners, no builders, only people. Um, I've heard there is a group of religious people here, and uh, would be interesting fancy meeting them. But I'll give it, I'll give them their time. Uh, we should probably just do it in the right time. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a religion um what's what's going on here uh what, what was that steve <laughs> huh? nothing oh, but you're saying something <laughs> <laughs> he's all beckett looks a little concerned as well <laughs> yeah he goes um well the uh i wouldn't call what we have here a, a religion there's been discoveries that we're very excited about and some of us i would say are um enthusiasts what sort of discoveries? Uh, well, I mean, maybe. I mean, uh, surely you've heard of our the tunnel of the the builders underneath. We found, mm -hmm. right? And they're sure. they're largely empty. There, and he, he kind of pulls up on it. He pulls up his data pad, and there's like a little like holographic display on the table. And it pulls up, and it shows like this kind of geographical like underlay of the planet. You kind of get a. It's mm -hmm. like it shows the planet in like in the interior, and you can see these tunnels. And they're they're like in a geometrical pattern, very very distinct, very organized. And he says, um, I mean, the tunnels honestly haven't shown much except for, you know, what amounts of great structural engineering. Um, they don't really do anything. We haven't found any mechanics in them. Nothing like what they found on Illus or these other worlds. Um, but uh, we did find, and he kind of pulled this one section, um, there, there, this, this chamber here, and it, it points to like a larger chamber. It looks like it's a pretty good size, probably about like the diameter of a football field. Um, and this one, we made a discovery of a strange um i don't know how to describe it um an orb that's sphere mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah and, and he pulls it up and, and it's, it's pretty good size it's probably like um according to what guillaume said here uh it's unclear how big it is uh <laughs> it's about uh it's a we'll say five meters in diameter yeah. it's pretty good size and it, it just floats in this it just floats there um, it, it bears a, a really, I don't know how to put this, a, a vague or a passing resemblance to the uh, ring station in the middle where, where Medina is, but at much smaller scale, nowhere near the power, it doesn't have the, near the readings. Um, but uh, we've, we've taken interest into it and in considering our, our options with uh, approach to discovery, although those discoveries are would be useless and pointless without being able to grow food here first. So clearly our interest is in getting our soil samples analyzed. Well, I would think there'd be a thousand eggheads who would like to swarm all over that thing if uh, they knew it was here. Uh, yeah. yeah. Has anyone approached you about this orb of yours? Um, we've kept it under wraps largely. Um, and as far as a thousand eggheads that would want to come here, there's also a thousand other worlds with not dissimilar things. So the um, the eggheads are spread thin right now. <laughs> um, no idea as yet as to what it does. Um, it's um, I'm sorry, it's it's I'm sorry, it actually is written here. It's three meters radius. I'm sorry. Uh, so I, I said five, so six, six meters diameter. Pretty close. Pretty close. That's good enough. Really uh, close. He, he's not, you know, he's not he's not a distance guy. Um, it's some sort of, you know, metallic, uh, and it has that, the, clearly made of the builders, but as far as what it does, um, honestly, it, 
it kind of floats there and um those those that have seen it have had um mixed reactions um so some some are really inspired by it other ones are just kind of like okay it's it's weird tech that, the, that these people left these things left here whatever they may can be we see it you we should see it you would like to go okay, down and see it, it? yeah um let me uh have let me... been able to move it no we have not been able to move it yet um there's been some uh, we're, we're a little scared of what moving it might do um it if we could move be. it exactly we're, we're not i mean look we're, we're trying to live here uh and we got to live with this thing so let's you know let's not poke the uh the alien bear um what, uh, what security what you do you have in those tunnels oh well it's about a um it's a it's a about a kilometer dive down there you'd have we have you have to take a, either a really long ladder climb and with the gravity isn't isn't a lot of fun or uh you would have to um take the elevators down and such like that too and the elevators are guarded so we we have a decent uh patrol on it um, i could actually put you in in touch with our chief of security uh and get you a, a captain cody would be happy to i'd be happy to have him take you down there and show it to you yeah okay be good um, how about we arrange that for tomorrow morning? I, I see you have on your schedule here to pick up and meet with uh, Dr. Otto and Dr. Kale. Um, but why don't we arrange that for in the morning? And uh, the first thing out there, I'll, I'll make sure Captain Cody meets you up. And he, he kind of dials it up and you see him texting somebody. Yes, this this sounds wonderful, boss man. I mean, why do we travel? Why do we travel these stars if we are not to see the wonders that are here? And you, you told me it's a beautiful universe, so let's go ahead and see all the beauties it has to offer. So exactly, this all this aligns well with everyone's interest here. Um, but yeah, I have no problem showing you the the wealth that we've accomplished here on New Luna. And once again, hopefully, um, it'll inspire people just to come here and take a look, even just a just a glance at the thing, let alone to want to stay and prosper here with our uh, flourish with our operations. But um, yes, uh, sounds sounds fantastic. Excellent, excellent. Um, and the dinner comes, and it, it's like a kind of modified. It's like reconfigured potatoes with flavoring in different shapes and forms. Um, it, it's pretty good. It's, it tastes good. They made it taste good for sure. So space Beck, toss. Beckett, what's that? Beckett space, pulls space, space toss. toss. Yeah, yeah. It's like Beckett a, pulls some hot sauce out. Right. Yeah, it, it's like a Roll like a uh, it's like a space gnocchi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People mm-hmm. say kind of dinner. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Be worse. It'll be worse. So that, that's a, is it in with us or it just leaves? Say it again. The, the assistant director, mm-hmm. is it in with us? Oh, he, he, he eats with you guys, but uh, he doesn't. He says he's not going to accompany you tomorrow to the sphere. Um, he'll have the, okay. the chief of security accompany you. But um, yeah, is that what you're asking? I'm sorry, just to make sure. Yeah, so uh, he goes away uh, after he talks to us. No, he stays the dinner with you guys. He, he's willing to talk to the dinner. Okay. Yeah, do you have something you want to ask him? Or... Right. Yeah, I, I'd like to ask him. Uh, oh, yeah, boss. Uh, why do you ask a religious man about pro- an engineering and school break problem? Why do I ask you? Was it an engineering problem? or what was, what Yeah, was... this is clearly... They built their technology, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I look back at the crew mm-hmm. for rescuers. Uh, so, what does would that have? What does that has to to do with the Church of Earth? Well, I, I mean, these discoveries, these things that we find out here. Um, if we think back to uh, the tragedy of the slow zone incident, um, they brought who did Earth bring up? They brought out religious leaders, violinists, poets. Because those are the people that can articulate what these things mean to us, put into ways we can grasp that aren't just looking at the thing in, in a bunch of technical babble and stuff. Too. Don't get me wrong; we are planning on trying to bring in more engineering um, and uh, Zeno uh, engineers and stuff like that too. Try to figure this stuff out as best we can. Unfortunately, they're in um, they're in short supply right now. Uh, there's a lot out there, and uh, we're we're. We are a little late out the gate. No pun intended. God damn, that was a good pun. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that was probably best for you, to be honest. Yeah, well, yeah. So, but yeah, he's like, um, we're a little bit behind the curve on this, but um, 
you know, we would love to get uh, the, your your unique perspective uh, on this thing. Perhaps you would be able to articulate um, something to the people here uh, to understand what they're looking at and understand and uh, grasp it. So this, I, I, I view you being here, Chaplet, as an opportunity. It's funny you ask for the perspective of Delta, but I'll take it by heart. I, I, why would I not want? I, once again, we are looking for a diverse perspectives here. The more uh, the different the different eyes we can put onto a situation, the better chance we have of understanding it. Um, and that I think has always been humanity's uh, one of the greatest strengths is those those the diversity of perspectives we can bring onto a situation. And yours is a unique one. We have uh, we don't get access to um, people of your faith uh, too often, and let alone Belters and Martians and, and the like too. And you guys have seen numerous systems, so perhaps you can compare notes even that would help out. So we look forward to it. I, I look forward to hearing what you have back. Uh, please, um, after you you do the delve with uh, the chief, the security chief, uh, come on back up, and um, I might have some time in the evening tomorrow night to follow up and hear what you have to say. Okay. Right. Uh, you actually look like the refers of our group. You'd be a good member of the Church of Heroes. Well, I'm I'm not um, I, I'm not I'm not I I'm a man that that looks that believes in what he sees, and uh, the Church of Eros brings an interesting perspective in terms of what our relative position to the builders might be, um, and that's what I want to consider. But I'd, I'd like to consider it. So um, if you want to. Uh, leave me want some of your literature. I'd be happy to look it over. It's fine, boss man. Oh, excellent, excellent. And you, oh. you, you have like a you have like a prepped like you know multimedia presentation to shoot over to him. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, uh, dinner goes on. Unless anyone else has a question here for uh, director, assistant director Kestel. I'm just giving him the stink guy. Okay. I'm <laughs> not. I'm not very impressed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I feel like it was just in one of those polls that's asking your opinion, but you know they they have things they would like you to say. But... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Chandra and Cornelius sit next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't say anything nice. Yeah. That's, that's why you sit here by me. That's why you sit there next to each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go to the captain. Yeah, Beckett does do one responsible thing halfway through the dinner he remembers to pull out his his terminal and double check that uh the fuel pellets and the medical supplies are being uh unloaded on schedule to make sure everything's good your your chief yeah your chief of payload goes uh yeah i've got the they got all here everything's unloaded no problems things are delivered uh they should be good to go um, if you want to go survey the delivery yourself, you're welcome to. And he gives you over the notes. But like, this is the guy you've worked with for a while. Uh, let me get you a name for him real quick. Uh, his name is uh, Jesse Hart. Okay. Uh, if he's a if former, Je- he's yeah, a former professional. Ahead. He's a former professional wrestler by the name of Jesse Hart. Mm, I, just, I don't know that name is like I think of. Um, but yeah, uh, but he, he's like a he's a Belcher payload specialist. Yeah. Yeah. No. If if Jesse suggests that uh, Beckett look it over, he just flips the message over to Cornelius without even responding. No, Cornelius, you, you get this over. You you get an invoice coming over, and it's just like it's boilerplate saying stuff's delivered, checked off here, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll run through that rather than listening listen to this assistant director. Dude. I'll work at the table, no problem. Awesome. <laughs> Actually, I'll take good time looking through this stuff. <laughs> That's this is more interesting than listening to some politician trying to find a new religion to misabuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Cornelius is a bit of a paranoid type guy. Do you guys want to retire for the night? Just hang out and take it, go to sleep, and wake yeah, up next morning. Things wind down. I'm gonna, you guys private was... space in my hotel room. Yeah, no bunk, no bunk mate. Uh, nice thing. Uh, they do have like a there's a queue for the showers and for the bathroom, or that's about it. But like it's it's a either a private shower and like a, on the ship, so you get a little bit more privacy. It's kind of nice. Um, they they do have uh, on demand though. They do have a numerous uh, pieces of culture from Earth, uh, big selection of movies and, and music performances and stuff like that. So you're welcome to purview those or uh, not. So uh, but. Captain? 
yeah, Beckett uh, retires relatively early uh -huh. and then um, pulls out his terminal and and starts sketching. It's it's mostly like uh, landscapes and and animals and interesting things like that. But he eventually turns to what he pictures this orb would look like. Spends a little bit of time working on that. All right, so you just you draw a circle over and over again until it goes through your yeah, data, until your data pass. Just okay. thinking about it. Okay. So yeah, you kind of you kind of think about this orb and, and interesting scene and directly. Okay, man, you, you draw it up, no problem. Uh, let's go to let's, let's hear from uh, Ethan, our pilot. I'd love to. I want to hear Ethan's kind of. What do you do in the evening? Do you keep on hang out drinking? Do you want to go and uh, hit up some 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 events there, or do you go just hit the sack? You know, once uh, the conversation uh, sort of winds down and the dinner is breaking up, Everett. Uh, collects, you know, tosses off the last of his drink, mm -hmm. collects his stuff, and uh, sort of goes wandering around. Uh, he's uh, a bit of an insomniac, mm. uh, and uh, so he uh, spends a lot of time just sort of uh, working things off before he feels like he wants to sleep. Uh, so he goes to just sort of look around uh, what uh, new Luna has to offer so far as that goes. So it does try, they do try to simulate like a light cycle on here of like, they don't do like it does on like series where there's like the eight hour mm -hmm. shifts over and over again, but they have it like a 24 hour light cycle, even though the planet's like, the, the yeah. planet's actually locked to the, um, uh, to the sun, mm -hmm. um, but everything's underground mostly. There's just a few domes here and there. Um, right. You can certainly go and check out one of their like, dome areas that you can kind of see out in space. There are some cinemas. They have like kind of old school, kind of like you go and sit in seats and like uh, view it, which is kind of a unique, weird thing, but it's something that apparently is big on, uh, you knew it was big on Luna and big on Earth. Right. Um, they have, uh, there is a brothel. There is like other bars. There is like a dance, kind of a, um, kind of a dance club. Um, there's some stuff like that. So there, there's a decent nightlife here of the few, mm -hmm. um, the few hundred thousand people that live here, but it's, so it's, there's something. To do. There's always something to do. Or do you just want to, do you just want to wander around? I, so where are we in the local uh, day cycle? Is uh, it right now, you guys are on the local evening. night here. It, it's it's locally night. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, Everett will probably um, end up uh, hit either hitting a club mm. or a bar mm. or both in succession, um, and uh, eventually uh, probably drink himself to sleep. Okay. Um, or at least get to the point where he's drunk enough that he can stagger back to the hotel and fall okay. asleep. Well, using my using my random name generator here for bars, uh, you stay. You go to a bar called the Abstract Cashew. I that's like <laughs> I can't do that. It's randomly generated. I'm gonna go with it because it's too, too good. I love uh, it. And uh, unlike most people on the crew, you actually know what a cashew is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so you you uh, you you go in because uh, it is that abstract to most people. And um, you you go in and have a nice time, and uh, it, it's a good club. You know, it's it's easy, and uh, you drink out, and uh, you uh, eventually uh, you you have you kind of pull out your your bar tab, and you paid up no problem, and you um, there's someone there to escort you back to your room. They can check what room you're in, and you do wake up in your room the next morning, no problem, um, safe and sound, um, and everything. And it's, it's actually mm -hmm. security is pretty good. They they let people have fun, but they also make sure like if anyone's getting rowdy, you can tell like. They get worried about being in trouble here. Being in trouble here is not a good thing. It seems like now that they're they're like cracking skulls, but more of like, yep. don't be that way here. We're trying we're trying to make it work. Um, okay, uh, let's go to Chandra. What do you want to do, uh, security officer? Um, well, I guess my job. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to tour the station more with uh, with security concerns in mind. Um, and uh, just see, you know, if everything is ship shape as oh. it were. Um, about 1 a.m. Uh, 1 a.m. equivalent time, you get a ring uh, from a place called the Abstract Cashew asking you to pick up a guy named Ethan Everett. Who's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> passed out. Yeah. There might be a few more of us there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Dayton, do you want to join Ethan? I, I would actually, Dayton's kind of a social guy with his people. We'd mm -hmm. probably go back to the ship and, and organize like an outing, like, oh. you know, like a, a, you know, take over the bar kind of thing where we go in and get rowdy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys, you guys, uh, let's say you just, you guys just storm the abstract cashew. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, after Ethan's already. <laughs> yeah. How long did they remember the storming yeah. of the abstract yeah. cashew? E e yeah, e Ethan's, Ethan's, Ethan scouted it. 
And like it was legit. <laughs> it's, it's in a group text, everyone that was legit. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right, let's go to Cornelius. What about you? Do you have anything you want to do this evening? Well, I'm quite suspicious, so I'm actually going to walk. Uh, I'm going to sort of saunter sort of behind, I guess, a mm -hmm. shadow, Ethan, but I'm going to ask people about. Yeah, this assistant director, this orb. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm basically doing a little investigation about. Um, roll an investigation. Situation. Roll an investigation check uh, from from me here. This is going to be your activity for the night versus everybody else's yeah. having, a, having a great time. Yeah, that's creepy. Uh, this is me having a great time. <laughs> so, <laughs> shadowing Ethan. Six, nine, <laughs> twelve. 15, 16, 17. Uh, okay. So you um, uh, you kind of start asking some people around, like, hey, you know, what's going on, and, and get get the scuttle, but the kind of what's going on at the station. Um, what'd you get on the drama die? Uh, four. Four. Okay. Um, you find out that there are people that are really intrigued about the sphere. There's actually people that actively want to go see it. They haven't. They don't really let everybody go see it. So it seems like there's kind of a contained group there. Of who has access to it and who doesn't. Um, that said, though, the people that discovered it, they all, everybody lived. No one's ever died down there. Uh, everyone's like, there's no suspicion of like wrongdoing. Oh, it's just something, it's just dangerous to go down the tunnels, is the idea. That's like the main mm -hmm. issue is like, it's, you don't just go down to a mine shaft for fun. You know, it's, it's, it's that kind of situation. Um, you said now that there's a limitation on access. Yeah, they don't just let anybody access it. So, um, and that's completely awesome. stupid. Okay. Do you do you want to do you want to ask people about like like do you want to follow up with any kind of questions about that or? Yeah, if there is a but yeah, is there some kind of like a grouping? Are there certain people who are not like whether you know if they're Belters or Martians or do you know that they don't get access? Um, no, there's no there's no discrimination that you find like about like someone's like, oh my Martian friend saw it like I uh, went down there I was working no, down there according to job like what they do for a living. Uh, some people are going minor. So there's a few down there that wanted to. They sent some biologists down there. They sent some uh, soil scientists down there. They sent everybody, anybody that on the station that had a, a expertise. They sent down there at least once to try to to see if they could learn something um, with whatever gear they have here. Unfortunately, the gear they have isn't like the best at analyzing all this stuff, so they can't do it a hundred percent. But everyone's kind of checked it out, and you know, there's curiosity, um, and some people. Um, you know, the one of the people you talk to specifically, though, uh, I don't like how you roll for this because uh, you did pretty good on your investigation. Um, was like, well, I mean, I went down there and I mean, it was moving. Um, you know, but I like, I grew up watching the earth rise from the moon every day. Now I, I get to see this thing just floating there. I mean, when they light it up, it, it just, I don't know, it just um, something about it uh, just touches you. Intriguing. All right. I leave. Yeah, I leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Let's go to Captain Davis. Yeah. You want to? Uh, you want to? You want to join the crew? Do you want to just take? Are you just taking it easy? Or what oh, you no. do? Yeah, he just takes it easy back there. Like, um, he's got. He's very much like a um, artist painter -y okay. type, and so he's seeing this as a nice little break where he can hang out, not be called upon. Um, he probably like looks up a couple of references of things he's seen on other planets and starts to to, so, to paint or draw those. One thing that does happen when you try to do this is there are no photos of the sphere. Interesting. Okay. Um, and it's unclear, despite everyone kind of knowing about it and having seen it, and even the director showing like a hologram of it, it's not. There's no direct photography or video of it you can find on the local records. Hmm. Um, he'll he'll be a little bit curious about that because like subconsciously he adds it in the background of whatever mm. he's drawing and then when he goes to look for a reference and doesn't find it he'll he'll do a little a little search and see if he can find just All people's right. um, descriptions of it i feel like this is a check i feel like there needs to be a check here i'm gonna Absolutely. go with your choice of either self-discipline or faith self-discipline or faith yeah wow that was not what i was expecting well you know what <laughs> I try. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Is this like, is this a willpower? Uh, willpower yeah. Because I definitely don't have those focuses. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at your character right now. I I know what to abuse on your characters, guys. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I rolled 
terribly. Oh, I'm winning. Um, so I got an eight and Ooh. I stunt with three. That's not going to pass out. Um, right. <laughs> you um, you cool. kind of unless you want to blow fortune on this, which you're welcome to. Um, no, no. You 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 kind of like the the sphere. It kind of incorporates in different elements here, and you draw it based on what you've seen of other builder tech here and everything like that too. Mm -hmm. And um, you you end up subconsciously at some point drawing, like you ever seen those drawings online where like someone draws the whole image and then they zoom in on a part and then there's like more of an image in there and they zoom in on that part there's more of an image in there. You end up doing mm -hmm. that with the sphere for probably three hours straight before you realize you kind of come to. And like right. it's super late and he's like, what is? Oh. It shuts off his pad, lies back, tries to sleep, and keeps thinking about it. And here's it. the thing. You dream wonderful dreams, and you feel you've, you you have not slept like this ever. Even under gravity. Nice. That's, it screws with you. It screws with you, man. Um, Sebastian, let's go to Sebastian at the bottom here. Uh, what's, uh, what are you doing for the night? You're, some, of the, some of your colleagues went off to a party. Some went talking to people. Another person just retired to their room. Uh, what would Sebastian want to do? Uh, I just go on walking by myself on the halls. Um, are there places to sit within the halls? Are there what? I mean, uh, are there any anywhere one could sit in, in oh, the yeah. halls? There, there's actually like a, there's like a garden. There's like a garden, there's like a garden in the, under the dome, and the docks have places to mm -hmm. sit. No problem. Yeah, you can just kind of chill out by the docks of the bay. Okay, so I just walking by myself. I sit somewhere alone, preferably. <laughs> Um, and I'm checking my uh, the notes on my inter internal about the Church of Heroes. Mm -hmm. um, and while I'm meanwhile, I'm looking at people trying to find uh, trying to find some some I may say uh, some representation of uh, some signal uh, about uh, religion or something like that. And um, trying to hear uh, about the sphere. About the what? About the sphere oh, and the religion. So there is like, the, so the you, you, you don't find it with the words religion, you, you kind of search around for, just give me a, give me a research test, intelligence research. As you kind of, you kind of delve into the databases yes. on the station here. So, 11, 14, 15. 15, okay. Um, you find that there's like enthusiast groups they call themselves enthusiasts. They don't call themselves uh, a religion, but there's like these groups that kind of talk about it and they have um, people for lack of a better term that have seen the sphere bear witness and give testimonies about the sphere. Um, and there are meeting groups. Um, looks like there is, uh, there's gonna be one tomorrow. Uh, may I know? When, where? Oh, yeah, you, you you have it in your, your terminal. Um, it does kind of go, um, at your time with uh, your, your when you're supposed to meet the scientists. It does conflict with your um, your your time to meet uh, Otto and Kale, but uh, it is okay. available. Okay. Right. Enthusiasts. 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 Not at all concerning. <laughs> it sounds it sounds way better than cultists. Yeah. I you know, I, I don't use fans. I don't right. I don't use the term fans that's derived from fanatics, and that's not judging mm, people yet, right. please. That's judgy. Yeah. Okay. Enthusiasts. Um they they have cultivated enthusiasm. <laughs> 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 Emphasis on the cult. Um you uh, so you guys kinda um you got everyone kinda retires, has gets up in the morning. Um you're all uh some of you have a hangover. Uh, some of you don't. Um, uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say, Ethan, give me a give me a tolerance test. Give me a Constitution tolerance test. Let's use this fine system. Sure thing. Feel like you're the one that would have to make the check here. All right. Uh, that is a 13 of my Constitution. Okay. Uh, it's not too bad. You you do okay with it. Yeah. Uh, um, is there anything that passes for coffee on this planet? They yeah. They have like the makeshift freeze dried stuff so you you get that it's it's it'll, not flavored great but yeah it'll do the trick it'll yeah. stimulate you how it, how it needs to um so you guys go ahead and do this uh you uh, as you guys kind of wake up and come out of the hotel um there's like uh you see someone with like um in a security outfit uh they do have a they do have a, a sidearm 
uh, and kind of standing there, just kind of casually talking to another security officer. And as you uh, come out, they say, uh, Captain Davis, hey, uh, Captain Cody here uh, for the, the security chief here. Um, we're told to guide you down and take a look at the sphere. And and Beckett has like a spring in his step. He feels great. Mm -hmm. Like what a sleep. And he says, oh, Boss Mang, nice to see you. Yes, we um, let me make sure we have everybody here. And we go down to see your special uh, treasure for New Luna. Very excited to see this. Uh, anyone here with a perception two or higher notices that the captain is joyful, enthusiastic. Got some pep. Got some pep, yeah. <laughs> he must have got the good coffee. I don't want so to look conspicuous, but I, I, I don't want to carry my full toolkit, but I am pocketing like several like you know, oh, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. Te tech stuff basically to be yeah. able to like maybe run some subtle tests. You got plenty of pockets. You got plenty of pockets. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Yeah, you, you have like a we'll say a half toolkit. Yeah. I uh, introduce myself to the captain. Ah, oh, yes, excellent. Uh, Chief Security of the uh, the Verde Libre. Excellent. Um, I mean, I can't imagine it's much, it's much of a trouble out there making uh, freighters. I, I feel like, uh, do, you, do you feel like the transport unit's keeping you guys safe? Uh, so far, yeah. And, it's, it's good to hear. You know, one has to say the piracy isn't as bad as it used to be. Oh. So many people died. <laughs> well, I, um, uh, let me, if you have any issues or concerns or questions while we go down to the shaft, please let me know there, uh, Officer uh, Dukas. I'll make sure your, your crew's taken care of, okay? All right. Um, and there's like a cart waiting. They have like one of those little like fancy golf carts with like the foam sticky wheels. They're ready to take you through. All right, okay. everybody gets on board. It, yeah, every sort of like slides in beside the captain. So hmm. we're really doing this. <laughs> yeah, we're It'll doing this. It's All going right. to be very. I. Did you, maybe did you look up, this orb last night? They have no pictures of it. Well, I imagine it's round. <laughs> Why? Why no pictures of it on, on their net? I don't know. It's... I didn't look it up. I looked up the local culture instead. I can smell that. Hmm. Hey, I showered. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I sit down next to Chandra if I can, and I and I sort of silently whisper so anyone local can't hear. They're very concerned about the union here. They ask many questions about the union. They do, yes. Yes, I find that worrying. <laughs> yes. I say it with bloodshot eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yes. What they're doing here is concerning. Um, I hope we get to leave. Um, yes. You guys make your way down to the uh, on the cart down to the the mining areas, and you can see people are still mining. It. They're taking you know, rubble out and all kinds of stuff out. Uh, various ores are being pulled out of this this uh, this planet, um, and uh, you get down to this this. You can now see some of the alien tech. Uh, the builder uh, tunnels. They're nice tunnels. They're actually like like they're not perfectly round, but they're kind of like uh, there's sides to them, um, and uh, they're very geometrical looking, very distinct, and um, it looks Quality like they holes. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's it's a it's you know. Did you know that the the holes only natural enemy is the pile? Um, so you but you you can see they have kind of a rail system like um uh like a. a uh, how do I put this? Like it's like an elevator that kind of rides along a rail that keeps everyone upright all the time, so you don't fall down. Um, mm -hmm. Captain Captain escorts you there and shows you the thing and says, "All right, well, uh, going down." You're not coming with us? Oh no, I'm going with you. Oh, okay, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Let's um, go down. Everybody here, though, uh, every, if you have a perception above two, mm -hmm. uh, and if you have the touching focus. Uh, you can feel a vibration in this area. I feel like you can actually feel like like there's like a subtle um, kind of like shift uh, in your feet. So, um, but you guys, uh, is everyone going down the elevator or is anyone going to stay behind? Whoever takes the touching focus. 
Uh, actually, uh, I have had th we've had three characters in our game take it and have expressed this. Uh, it's actually very helpful on spaceships. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say yeah. that. Yeah, no, it makes yeah. sense. I've called for it multiple times. For, for like monsters and stuff until when I was running Dragon Age on tabletop, dude wants to take the smelling focus. Oh, <laughs> smelling's <Okay>. great. <laughs> yep. Right. It's great. Hey, man, leaks in space suck. Uh, <laughs> uh, that air, air filter's going out? All right, let's find out. Um, so you go ahead and, and um, uh, is, is there, is everyone's going down? Mm. Yeah. Okay, we all go down. Seems like. Uh, takes a takes a few minutes to get down, make a 15 minute elevator ride, almost like goes straight down uh, the shaft here. And as you do, you come into this giant chamber and you can see they have like lights. Uh, you can see Cody like flicks on these lights and the light, the room lights up. And in the middle of it, you see this like metallic sphere just floating in the middle of this room. The room is not perfectly spherical. It has kind of um, a geometrical shape that reflects it, but you can see the lights all light up the sphere. Um, Beckett, uh, you, um, this, this feels good. This feels good. Okay. <laughs> um, Cornelius, you get a little bit of a, a bad taste in your mouth. Um, Ethan, the, the bad taste in your mouth stays. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's been there the whole time. Um, Chandra, the same thing. You feel, you feel a little, you feel a little like, something feels a little queasy maybe. Um, Dayton, um, how, how do you feel looking at this thing? I think just curious. I mean, okay. it's just really curiosity okay. at this point. You know, I mean, um, not, not not like excitement like Sebastian mm. or, or Beckett, but just like, what the heck is this? A little nervous, too. <laughs> that, that, you, know, that you go to fall back on that nervousness, and it's not there. Okay. It, you, you actually feel kind of like a calming, like mm. almost childlike curiosity. Um, and then Sebastian, you, uh, th this thing, uh, how do you feel about this thing? Uh, is it, I'm not sure if it's, is it an affront or is it, is it a possibly holy thing? I can't tell yet. Uh, I I'm hiding it, but I'm actually curious and confused at the same time. Uh, there was nothing on the <coughs> books of yours about that. Uh, <laughs> You, you actually, yeah, I, 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 okay. your well, mind, your mind goes back to some teachings on theology you had from a younger age, and you remember an old line from another religion that says, "You know, look upon me and be not afraid." <laughs> um, so you kind of get this idea, like you feel, you don't feel afraid at all. You feel very um, at one, a uh, little more uh, calm than you would. Um, so uh, I heard uh, it, it's floating up there. It's it's like you know, um, fifty meters in the air. It's not like it's not something you can just go grab. They don't have like ladders or cranes down here or anything to go grab it. So, um, hey, what look, do you... it's round. It is. <laughs> Beckett immediately goes to pulls up his terminal to take a picture of it. Uh, Captain Cody. Yeah, the same. Captain Cody says, uh, well, we're trying not to let information leak on this thing. We don't want it getting out to the rest of the systems. Uh, I appreciate you put that away there, uh, Cap Captain Beckett. Now, what is interesting, Captain Beckett, is this. Uh, the image, the first image you see of the seer matches your drawings of it exactly. Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then he'll kind of like, he's holding up the terminal mm. and hears this and We'll put it down out of respect and take another couple steps forward. Uh, it's, so you have your clear terminal, you look at it, and it like lines up exactly. Um, we're just going to assume it would be Cornelius. You notice the captain looking through his terminal at this thing, not taking any photos, but takes a second and then puts his terminal away. And you guys don't feel the hum. It, it's actually actively humming. So uh, I'd like to ask him to ask the, the guy. Mm -hmm. No, uh, this if the enthusiast groups started getting this information has spread throughout the colony, mm -hmm. even though you might not have any, any images of that. And oh. uh, how how are you? I I know that that's I I'm not sure if you're feeling that that there's a different thing emanating from that sphere. Uh, how, how are you dealing with that in, in the colony? Because that's certainly not uh, 
a normal thing. No, well, uh, I, I mean, I, like, I, I understand what you're feeling. You feel there's like a vibration. Some people have a negative reaction to it. Honestly, I find it quite calming, um, quite serene. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to share more of this with more people. Well, we'd like to make sure that the those that are coming here have good intentions. Um, a little worried, and also not to mention that the um, different different organizations would always want to come take. Look, we're, I'm from Earth, or I'm from I'm from Mars, and I know how Earthers can operate. And once in a while, they get a little too uh, grabby regarding things. And I'm sure you understand the Belter, um, that kind. And so we're trying to get away from that tradition and trying to make sure that we we take our time with it, but. Um, you guys are given like you guys have a, a few hours before your meetings for to meet up with the other people you're supposed to pick up, but you do um, have some time to look at the sphere. And uh, those of you that uh, feel good, you, you feel good the whole time. Those of you like Cornelius or uh, uh, Ducas and uh, Everett, you guys, it just it just feels nauseating. You're not sure if it's like where you are relative in the station or what, um, or this you're just kind of sick of hearing about the damn sphere, but. Um, Thumb's throwing you off a little bit. After the initial look, Everett hangs back near the entrance to whatever sure. the elevator yeah, no place problem. is. He's okay. he's had enough spearing for a while. Well, you know, <laughs> spent so many years salvaging. I can't help but wonder what what one might get for salvaging. <laughs> oh, I think there are plenty of people who would pay a lot. Yeah. Cornelius, uh, all these... uh, oh, sorry. Cornelius stares at this thing. He doesn't move away. He is trying to open his mind. <laughs> Have a rather closed mind. <laughs> okay, give me um, give me a uh, let's see if, let's see if you can open your mind. Give me a self discipline test. Let's see if you can open your mind, Quaid. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, five, six, eight. <laughs> okay, um, you you your initial kind of unless you want to spend fortune on this. Do you want to spend fortune on this? Yeah, how many uh, fortunes do I have to spend? Uh, you should have like whatever your fortune is at the top of your sheet, but um, I'll say you, uh, what is your lowest number on your dice? Uh, lowest number on my dice is a one. Okay, so you push that to a five, you're good to go. Um, so yeah, you, you go ahead and uh, you, you open your mind, it takes you a second and you kind of like refocus on it and consider the options and you suddenly feel that like that taste in your throat kind of go away and you can kind of feel a little more um, on the level with it. We need to protect this thing. Uh, exactly, exactly, and that's my that's that's very much. You see, Captain Cozy, that's my position on it. Uh, well, look, hey, uh, we got, I, I know you guys got another appointment, got another job here to do. Uh, why don't we head back up the shaft, and uh, I'll get you. I'll make sure I'll drive you over to the uh, soil works station. When when all the attention was on Beckett, I mm -hmm. I wanted to like just take some quick EMF radio frequency readings, whatever I could do. All right. Um, as subtly as possible. Give me. Uh, <laughs> so you you go ahead and run them. Uh, yeah. Nothing comes back. You don't get any kind of different uh, frequencies or anything like that. Nothing off your engineering training is pulling on this at all. Hmm. Okay. And um, now I'm getting really nervous about my career. It does reflect light. I mean, that is. It does. It does stand reflections, the metallic stuff like that. Like it has a presence. Right. It is there as far as your sensors right. go. But like nothing. Um, and you can see like a, you can sense a, like the vibration that you're like you're feeling. Yeah. You you take a look like you you run a, a test like a little laser test on the ground. There's no vibration on the ground. Everything's actually very still. So we're just feeling something that's not there. Let's go with that. Sure. Basically, anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, no air movements. Uh, airs the air no no air movements either. So. Oh fuck. Not unless there's <laughs> air cyclers moving it. Yeah. And they well, do. They did set up air. There are air scrubbers down here. They have set up locally, right. but they're um, the room's so big. They don't. They, they echo a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's everything's not good fight. with. Everything's good with the life support air, air scrubbers. Mm -hmm. There's nothing weird. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. All right. Um, you guys um, head back. Uh, uh, Captain Kelly insists you come back with the shaft. Uh, you guys all head back up. No problem. Yeah. Oh, Becca oh. will. I was just going to say, Beckett's going to walk with Sebastian and, and say, um, you know, this is this is interesting. You have any insight into this? Not directly, but uh, I, I want to speak uh, just so, so he can, he's the only who can hear me. I'm trying and to hear say, 
Okay. <laughs> I mean, not directly, but um, I've heard there will be a meeting today just of some kind of group, I don't know who, but they, they will see this chair again. And unfortunately, it's at the same time we will be seeing the scientists. Hmm. But do, do you think we can uh, try to sneak in and go we'll see that again? Maybe the scientists want to come and see it too. Maybe we meet know. them down here. There is a possibility, boss man. <laughs> I, I don't know if we should risk it. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> and just continues to walk. No. No. Um, uh, I sent a private message to Cornelius, uh, sending the same information about the meeting. I reply, I'm in. Okay, so I'm hearing the captain. Uh, oh, then, um, Dayton, you can make a hearing test if you want to overhear this. Yep, I actually have a hearing focus, so. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, plus four, so Ooh. that'll be a 14. Very nice. Yeah, you, you get to hear, they weren't being terribly discreet, uh, but you hear that they have a meeting they're going to about this thing. There's some sort of group here that's interested in this. Um, and uh, I'm guessing, I like how my, my two non-believers are here, the senior writers of the book. Um, the senior writers <laughs> <laughs> oh All right. Um, so you you guys have your, your uh, now the meeting with this group is directly at odds with when you're supposed to go and meet up with your uh, two uh, people you're supposed to bring back to the mm -hmm. soul system. Right. I want to hack Sebastian's Where terminal. are we meeting them? Uh, they have a they have a, a lab, um, and that's where their samples are. So some of your crew is coming on to, to start uh, checking the samples and make sure they're safe for transport. And when I say samples, I mean like giant cargo containers of the local uh, soil minerals, stuff like that too. Well, I want to go meet the scientists, so I'll, okay. I'll leave the religion to uh, All right. our chaplain. So, so who's who's going to? the enthusiast meeting and who so who's gonna go to the enthusiast meeting okay i'm hearing cornelius sebastian okay oh beckett is is considering it he feels like he needs to be the captain and meet the new people coming on the ship and he'll he'll ask sebastian well check to see if there's another meeting maybe a later one or, or one early the next day before we ship out i want to hear what they have to say oh Take notes, or maybe, um, maybe maybe record something. I would like to listen, but I'm I must be professional, be the captain, <laughs> and and he'll he'll meet the people. I am going to the appropriate meeting, and but also wish to see if there's any means of hacking into Sebastian's uh, hand terminal. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, you, uh, his, his terminal is linked up to the ship, and right. uh, you guys can start. You have a you have a chance to go through and, and dig it up if you want to. There, um, Ian. Yeah, I'm just gonna, but I just want to, but it basically link and record every, you know, and maybe see if I can like actively turn on his speaker essentially. So you want to see if you can listen in? Okay, uh, give yeah. me a, give me a technology test. <laughs> Okay. Um, while you're in proximity, and I'll give you a plus one on this because you have uh, you you're part of the ship's like administration crew. Okay. I mean, this is what I kind of do. Okay. Not so great. A three and two ones. Oh, that's a six. I think I'm a fortune. But but well, hang on. But I have plus six to technology, so that's that's a twelve thirteen. That ain't good enough, my friend. Uh, okay. Take one well, of them will... ones. You need to get up to. Uh, I would put this at a, at a target number eighteen. I will absolutely throw as much as I need to. You didn't get a one? What was your total of 12, was it? Uh, no, I, I rolled a three and two ones, so. Okay, so that's five, six, eleven. You the one to us. Yeah, if you, put the, if you put the one to a six, spend six fortune, um, I'll absolutely. give it to you. Okay, so Done. that'll do it. It's good. So you do manage to, like, um, you don't have full access to his terminal, but you turn on his listening device, so you could actually, like, record it to your own or have your little earbud uh, play it for you while he's there. That's what I want to do. Um, and, and record it. And record it, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Let's start with the... Uh, let's, let's begin with the meeting, the proper meeting here uh, as such. Um, 
captain, uh, pilot, security officer, and our mechanic all approach uh, the soil works. Um, this is the place where they, they're largely kind of doing some, um, this is like a lab. I mean, you've seen eggheads like this everywhere. Um, as you do, you come in, there's, there's a secretary there. Uh, this man stands up and says, uh, greetings. Uh, I'll, I'm Aaron, I'm to be your liaison today uh, to arrange anything. Can I get anyone something to drink? Uh, juice perhaps, or some uh, some of our soy milk or something? Do you have any more of that terrible coffee? <laughs> he kind of laughs, he's like, we got plenty of the terrible coffee, my friend. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he, he like has a thing brewed up for you and um, they actually have a few flavor, a few more flavoring options here. This seems to be a place where a lot of the um, resources have been concentrated, um, much like the coffee. Um, so for me. So they, they they give you what you need. And he says, um, "Well, um, uh, Doctor Doctor uh, Rachel K will be out shortly. Um, I think uh, Doctor Otto is running a little late, um, but let me go ahead and get." And he kind of pages up and oh, oh, yeah, uh, she'll she'll be right out. And so this this woman comes out. It's an Earther uh, woman. Uh, she's got brown hair, uh, fair skin. Comes out and says uh, she's got like a lab coat on and everything. Too, and says, uh, "Greetings, I'm uh, Doctor Kale. I believe you're to be my my ride back to Earth." That's nice us. to meet. Nice to meet you, Doctor Kale. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. I, I have to apologize for my colleague. Uh, Ar Armin's Ar 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 Aram's been rather busy lately. <laughs> um, preoccupied, we'll say. Well, sorry, he couldn't make it. Well, he'll, he's going to have to make it uh, in the morning to get on your shift. But um, if you have any kind of check-in procedures you need us to do, um, I can cover for him to some degree. Well, that should be. No. Is this a problem that we need to worry about? Well, he, his uh, look. I, I'm the mineralologist. I'm the one that kind of figures out the the weird stuff going on in in the the soil. Mm -hmm. um, but he's the one that understands more of the uh, biology of what 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 we can introduce that will live in that soil. Does that make sense? So we're we're a team. Mm -hmm. um, one without the other, and, and he's um, he kind of looks for her assistant Aaron, and he Aaron's kind of like Aaron kind of rolls his eyes, and it's kind of like okay, yeah, this. He's yeah, I know. <laughs> What's that? He's at the other meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's go jump to the other meeting real quick. Uh, we have uh, Cornelius and Sebastian. You come into like a small meeting room. Um, looks like the kind of place they host like an AA meeting or something. Um, I hit the record button. My okay, you hit the record button on terminal. Um, as you do, there, there's probably uh, same, about same here. there's about 20 people in there, um, and uh, 20 30 people in there, and they're all kind of sitting around talking. And um, uh, one of them comes up to you and says, "Oh, we have newcomers. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, wow, wow. We don't we don't get a lot of Martians and Belters here. We're all one. No, I just." Um, well, well, feel, feel free to help yourself to some of the bad coffee we have. Um, that's like the universe awesome. here. Um, but they're like, how, how? I mean, you're a newcomer. We haven't. We don't recognize you from the station. Uh, I, greetings. I'm. Um, let me get you a name real quick here. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Lynn. Uh, welcome to our the, the Sphere enthusiasts. Um, what? Uh, How did you hear about the Sphere? If you just got to the station. We have witnessed um, it. You, you witnessed it? Mm. Have you witnessed it too in points of Sebastian? Hmm? Uh, yeah, we we just took a look at that. Um, and I, I heard you, you gather in a meeting, and I, as a religious man, I could not uh, I could not avoid that. Mm. I, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy for you to be accepting me. Well, absolutely. We, anyone that wants to discuss the sphere and its meaning to humanity is, is welcome here. Um, well, look, uh, maybe um, have you have you? Met, oh, oh, so he just came in, and like she kind of like she kind of like takes a second and kind of gets distracted. And you see walking into the door, uh, Assistant Director Tim Kestel. And Assistant Director Tim Kestel is accompanied by uh, Captain Cody. We'll we'll jump back to the other the meeting then. Chief oh, security, right? Yeah. So so the, the okay. chief of security, the chief of security, and the assistant director for the colony are both here at the meeting, uh, and it looks like they're being welcomed okay. by people. 
Yay. <laughs> um, and, and, look, and they're with a, they're with a third man that you don't recognize. Um, actually, Cornelius, you actually recognize him. You recognize him as Dr. Aram Otto, the one guy you're supposed to transport back. Okay. <laughs> Um, you guys, the other, the other party, uh, you're meeting with Kale, uh, seems to be going pretty well. Um, and, uh, she's just going through the procedures and talking about what, how to handle the samples. This is all stuff you guys have on uh, your, your payload specialist have and everything down. Um, and, uh, do you guys have any questions for her? Yeah. Becca would say, um, is anything biohazardous? Do we need to... Uh, train the crew or double check your bio seals well, regular we, we, we figured we would load the containers onto the exterior of the ship as opposed to the main thing um it, this isn't this isn't just a procedure for like safety but also um it stinks after a while they don't um, need heating it's pretty cold on the outside of the uh, ship they have self they're, they're self-contained uh things they'll hold they'll hold the the heat into and, and the heat doesn't emulate the tube out the back of the off the back of the ship actually because it is uh, space. There's no uh, conductive material on the outside, so they'll they'll hold the heat well. But they also have self regulation inside as well, um, kind of like like it's like a minimal life support system. Ethan okay. leans into uh, Dayton while the captain is talking uh, and says, "I can't believe that Cornelius is missing this. It's an opportunity to inspect boxes of dirt." <laughs> All right. Oh, and by the way, check under uh, Dayton's hangover cure in the recycler next time. Yeah, definitely. I, I, it's uh, I have it programmed in. It's good. Uh, so, uh, Dayton, while you're standing there, you kind of start getting the buzz in your ear. Um, the recording here. Yeah. And you um, you overhear a conversation between Sebastian and Cornelius. Sebastian and Cornelius. So the two of you are at this meeting. Uh, the hostess Lynn kind of took, took out to talk to these three other people. Uh, you recognize all uh, Cornelius. You recognize all three of them. Sebastian, you recognize two of them. Um, what do you guys want to do? Oh, so uh, well, I, I'm well. The sphere needs protection. Uh, I just need to to witness what these people intend to do with the sphere. Okay. Okay. Sebastian. Um, uh, that's difficult. <laughs> that's it. Okay, so I just look at them and um, uh, oh, okay, so we're thinking. Uh, I look at them, it's uh, director and uh, chief security, right? Mm -hmm. And then Cornelius seems to recognize the other one. It's which? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I will point that out. Just yeah. Yes. So this is your this is your that's passion. Otto. Yeah. Here. This is Otto. This is the other guy we're bringing along. He's here with us. He's not where he's supposed to be. Hmm. Curious. I, I, I don't I do not state for the other people that uh, that we know the director and security. Mm -hmm. I I look at them. They. Uh, oh yeah. They, I, they, I mean, direct, they the director change. Yeah, he kind of exchanged a look and he gives you a wave real quick. Um, yeah. he, he seems like he's, you could approach him if you wanted to, but he's not asking you to come over to talk to him or anything like that. But you're, you, he does seem welcoming to people. And he's shaking people's hands and everything like that, too. And people are happy to see him. Do I hear the director and the security you hear, and, and such in the background? You hear Cornelius mention that Otto is here, the, the guy you're supposed to meet. Right, but I don't uh, hear the director or the security. Uh, I'll say you do. I'll okay. say, yeah. I mean, it's it's if I can make one uh, uh, sure. just to the recording, is that the, the terminal is in my sort of the pocket here sure. Sure. with the camera filming. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But again, you're, you're only hacked into Sebastian's. Uh, yeah, I'm only hacked into Sebastian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I have archives. Now I wish I'd hacked you. <laughs> <laughs> I have <laughs> archives. <laughs> All right, too late to conspire, my friends. But you, yes, um, you, uh, but yeah, you start hearing. Oh my gosh, people are there. There's actually something going on with this thing. Um, Rachel, Rachel walks you guys through the procedures. Starts walking you back, uh, getting getting all settled up with the ship and everything. Not a real big issue, unless you guys have any questions about that. Um, 
and uh, she uh, she kind of schedules it, sets it up so you guys are like uh, it looks like you're according to your um, your schedule, you guys will like ship out tomorrow afternoon, uh, and everything everything's gonna be loaded over t- tonight from your crew. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Chandra, do you have a question or a comment? Um, well, so your your station medicos, um, they've been reporting anything strange, strains on mental health or anything like that. Um, Uncontrollable vomiting. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's it's been pretty mellow here. Um, that's, a, that's a weird question. It looks to Aaron. Aaron Aaron's not really. Um, We've had a few people miss work here and there, but uh, I think it's more of um, they're just stressed and they're they're looking for some uh, time off to try to like reconvene themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's been it's been increasing a little bit, but I mean we're all not used to being this far out. I mean even when we, even when we were on Luna, it wasn't a problem because we just go down to Earth for some R and R, you know, it's a few hour trip. But being this isolated, I don't think people were worried. Um, some people here. Um, uh, living underground has kind of been the style for us, but there's a lot more domes on, on Luna, and here it's, it's a little more um, claustrophobic. Um, mm-hmm. the, the local Belter population seems to like it a lot, but we're some of us are getting a little antsy about it. But I feel like uh, people are finding things to do, so I'd, I'd rather them be come back to work healthy than to be problematic. Okay. But it, it is concerning. So. I mean, I was just concerned if... Um... Uh, exposure to the orb had had a noticeable effect on people here. Noticeable? Uh, I mean, I ha- I haven't seen it. Um, Aaron, have you seen it? Or, no. I was like, um, most people. Have, I, I've heard a few people got a little bit of of, of a queasiness, but I, I suppose that might just be the, the air pressure being that far down in, into the planet. Maybe mm-hmm. I mean that could be it. So I I don't know. I'm not a not a bio. I'm not a you know an ears nose throat person. So. <laughs> I, I don't think that there's anything that we need to be worried about. It is this beautiful presence. Mm-hmm. Well, so that's, peaceful. That's what I, I heard. feel as if the people on your in your colony are stressed. Maybe they should speak more about this orb. Mm-hmm. See it. Well, I, I know there's an enthusiast group here on the station that's, that's been uh, discussing ways to approach it and think about it. Um, some have some... So we keep hearing. Yeah, some have some weird ideas, but, uh, you know, we're we're trying to keep an open mind, and I think that's the key here. None of them have really been a problem or any disturbances on the station. Um, anyone that has had some kind of a wild idea, we find them... Um, they, they don't... How do I put this nicely? They, they get a talking to... Uh, there, there was one person uh, a few months back that was in discussion about. Uh, they found out was trying to like um, some of the mining charges would disappear, disappeared, and uh, they supposedly they were going to go down there and try to detonate and close up the shaft or the the thing. I'm not sure what happened, but they got uh, they've been they've been uh, uh, sequestered. We'll say. So, who was that? Oh God! It goes. It looks to Aaron. Says Aaron, "What was his name?" And Aaron takes a second and goes, "Oh my God! Let me go look that up real quick here." His name was. Uh, his name was uh, Ernest Bowden. And I'm guessing by sequestered, you mean stuck in a cell somewhere? Yeah, station security um, <laughs> has him on those charges. Uh, needless to say, taking uh, explosives alone was a big issue. Um, but he was one of the miners uh, that, that was working down there. Um, as we found out, had access to stuff and kind of uh, had stuff fall off the cart one too many times is how he got caught. Mm-hmm. But it hasn't been a big deal. Chandra, will you be able to check the interior of these crates or these containers before they get attached to our ship? When people start talking explosives at this get nervous <laughs> you, you think there's explosives on those things no 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 no. Oh. i just i just anything that's getting attached to my i mean our ship <laughs> <laughs> I, yes I, we will I run get... our safety procedures okay, okay. yeah I, I suggest we rejoin our it's procedures. just routine but you know with concerns about smuggling and regulations we have to verify the contents of everything yes yes our our inspector Cornelius will uh, be glad to explain all of the regulations to you in incredible detail. <laughs> um, and I, 
Cornelius and Sebastian, as you guys kind of stand there, um, you guys kind of watch this thing happen, and people are kind of talking about their experiences. People are doing testimonials. Some people are talking about how just even knowing that it exists is good enough for them, that that makes them, like, really think about, like, a better universe and everything for themselves. But the one thing you do notice, Cornelius, is that um, Otto leaves. And you kind of see him, like, oh, shit, like, I should be somewhere, and he shakes a hand and leaves. Anything? You gotta unmute. Maybe I, um... Yeah, I'm, um... I think I, well, him leaving is, uh, is, uh, you know, that's not, not my concern. Um, this thing needs to be protected. <laughs> uh, Sebastian? Um, I'd like to try and understand to, to understand if there is some uh, well, how can I say uh, a le- degree of organization in this group. If there is a leader, or if they're just just there, it, they have like a facility. This, this person, Lynn, the, that you met earlier, what seems to be a facilitator, kind of keeping like the the conversation going and keep. But everyone seems really happy. Um, they seem willing to share. No one's like there. There is like the hierarchy of the station, but when the assistant director's here, I mean, he talks about some stuff, but he doesn't seem to like completely overrun the conversation. There's no one getting up on stage, staying the whole thing, giving a sermon. Um, are you asking if they are a leaderless uh, enthous- enthusiast yeah. group? Yes. Right yeah. now, there is no one that's, that's kind of stepped up. Um, Okay, no. so we're we're still in a room. We are not close to the sphere yet. No, not at all. You you're in the main station. I mean, you're like in a meeting area. Like it's kind of off of a hotel, mm-hmm. um, like a like a conference room, like a large conference room. Okay, so I'd like to, uh, and the first opportunity I have to ask the group, um, and uh, I'd like to ask them, uh, have you have you ever had the opportunity to? share the benefits of the, the the positive effects of that artifact with the colony well that's what we're hoping to do here is open people's minds to it i i think one of the issues is that people think it's alien it's gonna be bad um they think back to um the people that perished uh on illus or on eros or even on ganymede and they get worried um, and not understanding that those were just initial contact points. Now we're in it, we have our time, and the sphere is not a threat. It just it just stands there, it just sits there, and we can take our time to understand, and I, and I think that's the, the golden opportunity here. So we're just trying to get uh, yeah. the word out slowly. Um, it's, 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 there's more and more of us every day. Uh. Yeah, uh, that that seems to be interesting, very interesting, a very positive idea. But I've heard that some people don't seem to feel good about around that, even though I felt good about that. Um, what do you know about? That? That's I, I. It's a deep mind shop, and that's not a uh, an environment for everybody. But um, maybe I have to change of yeah. mind. Oh, oh, excellent. See, exactly. They, one by one, they it happens, you know. It, people open their minds. This is a dangerous political tool if it's abused by the wrong kind of organization or political entity. We need to protect this thing. Exactly, exactly. And you see uh, the assistant director come over and say, I, I, says, I, I knew, I knew these, these, this opportunity that came in on the Verde Libre would, would, would be amazing. Moving back... To uh, Chandra, you notice that Dayton is uh, face is kind of like like a little bit of a nail biter. <laughs> maybe nail even biter. touches his ear once or twice. You know, yeah. <laughs> Doing that, like I'm listening to something. <laughs> you know, he's not a spy. Terrible yeah. poker face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's thank uh, Dr. Kale and uh, be on our way. Yeah, Dr. Kale, I'll be ready for the pickup tomorrow, and, and I'll oversee the rest of my my transit and how the next stuff gets transited over. No problem. Oh, as you guys, as, as, as you leave this thing, um, a man comes in and you see uh, Dr. Kale go, 
um, Otto, you're finally here. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry I'm so late. And he kind of looks at you guys and says, oh, um, sorry for being late and for the setup and everything, the organization. I I'll be there tomorrow to, for, to, for us to leave, okay? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't and he, worry about it, friend. And he comes on we, in. Okay. You're going to be on our ship for months of time. We're going to get to know each other. We're going to just be friends. All right. I, I got no to go, go pack up my office real quick. And, and, and is Aaron, help me. And Aaron's, okay. So he goes, they, <laughs> they go off to pack up his office. Um, Chandra, you're, you have to take kind of a little sidebar with Dayton outside. That's when you involve the captain and Ethan. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the captain. <laughs> Possibly <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> I think we need Ethan because we need to make sure the pilot's on our side. I, I, I'm definitely for <laughs> Ethan. Okay. I, I am definitely. All right. So the so the the, the green Ronin folks all like bunch. Of... <laughs> <laughs> there is a mutiny. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we so we renamed the ship the Green Room. Exactly, that's all yeah. I was about to say. There you go. <laughs> After we, yeah. After we, I mean, we have all the paint, like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Paint color. All right, you guys, uh, you guys, kind of talk off. The captain's kind of staying there off the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think we really need to be ready to get the hell out of here. Um, I can't wait to get off this planet. It's yeah. worse than you think. Uh, what do you mean? Record. I just trans. I, I, I transfer like yeah the files to Chandra's and 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 Ethan's. Okay. So and terminals. you you get these highlight reel of like the meeting. Space. Yeah, I try and highlight. Yeah, bits. and <laughs> you get the names of who was there. You get your two crewmates went there. Uh, you get that like it's kind of this. There's something going on with this enthusiast group. Uh, yeah, they're up to something. I think it might be happening. Maybe mm -hmm. even now. At first, my concern was that we would be trapped here and have to join uh, their cult or something. But now I also have a concern about what we're bringing back with us. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> I'd love to hear your suggestions, Chandra. Um, well, I think um, once the stuff is is I don't know. We should try to get a better look at it ourselves and be ready, if needed, to just kind of jettison it into space. Fine by me, but uh, we'd have a lot easier time getting a better look at it if Cornelius wasn't off mooning over the uh, <laughs> sphere. Yeah, he uh, kind of flipped a switch, didn't he? The captain looked a little entranced, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. and, and like walking ahead of everybody <laughs> yeah, we're all he like yeah. turns <laughs> around and says like what uh what are you all thinking for dinner hmm? well is there any option other than the original pond there is <laughs> and i will give you i will give you several names here in a moment Just some good old kibbles fine by jesus these are like one of these random names is this is this is offensive it's called the chili trumpet uh, <laughs> But, uh, there was like the curry. There's like a curry house. It's called the Curry House, um, mm -hmm. and there is a place under the dome called the Crystal Rooftop. And then they have a um, there's kind of a fun family, like more family oriented place because there are families here called uh, Whammy. Yeah, let's Whammy. Not <laughs> but the, the chili trumpet is not. I, I'm okay. I'm okay to do the abstract um, cashew, but not the chili trumpet. That's too much. Mm -hmm. This is just a bridge too far. This is a bridge too far, my friend. Do they sell food, like just like grown food or anything here? Oh yeah, there's like, like there's like there's like a few carts. Yeah, you can go get like a go to like the the generic you know kind of hot dog car, the burrito car, the bowl car. There's, there's a lot of no, stuff. Like yeah. potatoes or just like oh yeah, you can get raw. Yeah, you can get cook, raw. It, cook your own. Because food. I'm thinking of going back to the ship. Yeah, but getting to, <laughs> and not eating anything else here that might be in the water or whatever. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no, no problem. No. So yeah, you, you go. You can get. You can go get some raw uh, but goods. But some fresh home. ingredients would be good. Yeah. Okay. A lot of potatoes is what they have. Uh, some seasoning. Uh, they do have like some soybeans and stuff like that. So just, mm -hmm. that's pretty kind of your, your spread of what they really have here uh, to focus on. Hey, microwave potatoes, some soy butter, and soy cheese. Mm -hmm. Right, man. Okay. <laughs> So you guys, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's not a problem for you, Dayton. You go and get the ingredients for the for dinner for the night, and you can go back to the ship and make dinner. Um, mm -hmm. Does do you guys? 
Captain with uh, Chief Security, what what do you what's your deal, Captain? Like you're you know Dayton saying he's gonna go get dinner and everything. What do you want to do? Ah, we go to that curry place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So get some stuff for the road and then okay. Uh, do you yeah, want to order the rest of the rest of the crew out there? Um, I will pass the information on to the crew to say that hey, we found this nice place. We're going to check it out. It's got some curry and <laughs> like. He's he's pretty excited. Okay. Um, Cornelius and Sebastian, the two of you get this contact, and the captain's asking for like, a crew dinner uh, and the like. Do you guys want to show up for it, or, or what? Do you, I mean, and Sebastian, you make some good contacts here. These people are they're willing to talk to you. Um, it seems like there's something going on here. Like they're very tonight. Today feels like a they they feel like they're they're having a special time with each other, uh, celebrations such like that too. Um, Cornelius. Um, do you, you seem to have an agenda here you've expressed. Uh, do you want to pursue that agenda? Or... <clears throat> well, I, I wouldn't really know how to, but um, uh, consider, well, I would like to know more, basically, about what these guy people are thinking, but maybe more of it, like trying to get, I guess, the vibe of these people. Why are they just happy go lucky kumbaya people, or is there something? Do you more to do you this? want to talk to the, the the people that are kind of there, or do you want to talk to specific people, like the assistant director and the security uh, chief of security? Uh, the assistant director is probably huh. a good target to figure out what what his intentions are. All right, uh, you go and approach uh, assistant director Kestel. Um, yeah. He he go he goes uh, he says uh Cornelius it's excellent to see you again. What can I what can I help you with? So what what's your what do you intend to do about this orb of yours? Your intentions towards my sphere. Um, he <laughs> says um I'm not interested. We're we're interested in exploring its possibilities here. Um, it clearly it does something. Um, we would like to bring in more expertise regarding um, cognitive science uh, and people that are experts in the Xeno, um, uh, the Xeno technology. So, so how old does he look like, this guy? How long is he, what? Young? Yeah, how oh, old he's like middle-aged, he's probably like in his, he's probably like in his 50s. Yeah, okay, so he will remember the hero, Eros. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Do, do you remember Eros? Uh, Yes. Do you, um, do you remember Protogen? Yes, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this thing needs protection. Oh, I if agree. You spread all the Kumbaya love about this. Who do you think is going to come call it? Well, this is why we're restricting information flow on it. Uh, why yeah. we ban photos of it and such. But also, um, we're we're fairly isolated here, um, and we would like to. Welcome more into the fold. Uh, so far as uh, anyone that would attack us to, to steal this, I think um, they would run up against, well before they got to us, they would run up against the wrath of the uh, transport union. Yeah, can you trust the transport union in this? I, I, we can trust the transport union to restrict access to our system. I know that for a fact. They don't let people come go willy nilly. But you're right. Our isolation will only last so long. This is, um, but we like to invite more, and hopefully, um, our our um, our friend uh, Dr. Otto is actually taking a um, well. It, it, it's it's a research trip as well back to uh, Luna, but is also going to hopefully bring in some more experts to help us understand better what's going on with this and why uh, we should celebrate this more. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. I have a dinner appointment. <laughs> um, anything from Sebastian or anyone else before dinner? Um, I would like to approach Lynn. And, uh, so, uh, that is us talking in private, right? I suppose I wasn't here. I, I wasn't listening to, to his conversation. Mm, no. Okay. So uh, I'm approaching Lynn, and uh, I'd like to ask her, uh, tell, tell me one thing, has someone ever touched the sphere? Um, yes, they have. Uh, the, the, from my understanding of what we had, our testimonies of the initial contact with it, is that it just, um, 
it's not much different than like what we think of as the uh, ring station. That it just kind of sits there, it doesn't move. Um, it, it doesn't emulate a lot of energy unless it's like directly impacted. Um, it's pretty, honestly, pretty docile though, um, as far as we can tell. But it seems, I don't know, just we're eager about it. Yeah, that, that's that's very interesting because when I, when I saw it for the first time, I didn't watch it, but I still felt something positive. He, and she, if people, she, takes, she takes a second. And she goes, "You can still feel it, can't you? I can feel it all the time." And you, and you do feel yeah, it. You do, do. you do feel it a little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just it, it's uh, it's something I've never felt before. Um, it, it's something I never learned through my faith. Uh, the Church of Heroes never thought about that. So that's probably something we could update on the teachings of the Church of Heroes. Exactly. I don't know. This is an expansion for humanity. The next, these next steps, I mean, that feeling you feel, do you think do you think people like Marco and Naros would have done those things if they felt like this? Can you imagine? imagine? You know, some people, some people are just evil. I don't know what they would do with that. I, I, I think this is the dawn of a, of a new age for us, and I, I believe. I, I haven't seen it, but I feel it. And, and everyone here feels it, and I think that's something we can all we can all agree upon. Um, yes, but uh, there's something that worries me is that some people didn't feel it. And and that's strange. Hmm. That's strange. I, I'm not sure if it's a matter of faith. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of the effects of the environment. Hmm. But hmm. that's strange. Well, I... And that concerns me. You know, that's that's good, though, that they fear it. They have a, They have a healthy fear. I mean, I don't think we should look at it just, you know, openly and think about it just being this thing that we all want to engage in. We want to bring them to it, but maybe they're just not ready yet. I'm sure you've had people that you shared your faith with and they're just not ready for it. Um, all faiths yeah, have sure. that. So why don't, sure. I think, I think um, one of the, we take it step by step and we try to create a pathway for them forward. Maybe you can help us with that. It is possible. Fantastic. I'd like to see well, more about that. Well, look, I, I know you have your crew, and let's let's try to keep this this keep these next steps. I'll have you all. We'll arrange a meeting, and everything like that too. But um, if you're not as uh, um, enthusiastic about leaving, maybe you'd want to stay here with us and, and help us become more encompassing. Uh, look, uh, I'm not thankful for your offer. But I have my crew. Uh, the ship is my home. You know, I'm better. Uh, uh, but absolutely. we can stay. We can. We can keep in touch. We will so absolutely, absolutely. My... And she sends over her details and everything. So okay. Um, let's go to dinner. Uh, does everyone show up at the dinner? Yeah. All right. You guys go. Uh, to... Well, uh, oh, sorry. While 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 we, while we are walking uh, towards the. Yeah. Restaurant, mm -hmm. and since we finished the conversation, uh, I back the other file and sent to the captain. Okay. Uh, nice. Okay. You you said you want to you, you you wanted to say something to the captain. No, I just sent the file to the captain, oh. and okay, so I, I read some brief words mm -hmm. saying uh, it's positive meeting. Uh, got some contacts. Here's the file. So you get another, yeah. you get you get a more elaborate transcript than you did from um, Dayton, but yeah, it's it's there's there's a group here and it's not small and you get the notes of who's involved and it's some players around the station, people in power. Beckett finds this very interesting and doesn't realize that Dayton was listening in and will share it oh, with right. uh, with the rest of the table and be like. Um, Sebastian, he, uh, he did a good job taking down notes from the meeting. Did anybody want to go through it? They sound sure. very passionate about what they are doing here. 
Yeah, I bet they do. And what exactly are they doing, Captain? Oh, and, and he starts, like, flicking through. It's making a better universe for all of humanity. Isn't that just something? And you can see him, like... That's something, all right. Like, playing with his food and making little spheres. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he went full Dreyfus on us. All right. Does <laughs> <laughs> have meatballs? Yeah, yeah. And he has meatballs. Yeah, meatballs and curry. <laughs> how big oh, is this station, th- this whole area, and how much of the uh, drive could. Co- co- anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Burning from orbit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even orbit, just. <laughs> nope. It's the only way to be sure. I'm gonna uh, gonna message uh, Ethan and Dayton and tell them I think that we should talk to and perhaps spring the demolitions guy who was arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> should at least talk. Sure, let's do it. All right. Uh, dinner's awkward. Uh, yeah. We'll stay here. Uh, yes. <laughs> really. Once again, you bring you bring religion to a dinner conversation. It gets awkward. Uh, and, uh, um, but you, you, uh, you do, um, you guys kind of get through the meal. Uh, my question is, what do you guys want to do tonight? Do you want us to go back to your rooms? Do you want to go back to the ship? Uh, who wants to do what? Let me start with, let me start with Ethan. Uh, Ethan, uh, says that, well, he says at dinner that he's had enough of the, the night, so-called nightlife of new Luna. Um, and uh, is probably going to call at an early night. We have to get going tomorrow, and there's mm. going to be loading and all of the checklist for you know taking off. So you know he's he's going to get some get yeah. some rest uh, as far as that goes. Are you going to um, rest on the at the hotel or on the ship? Mm, probably better to um, be back on the Libre. The hotel's all right. right. Libre's good. Let's go down to Cornelius. Uh, what about you for the evening? <laughs> Kill him here, because because I've I've been I've been part of um, no, so that was out of character. Um, I'll uh, I'll probably tell the crew, and they'll probably know that I'm lying because I'm not a very good liar. That I'll probably just go back to the hotel, uh, and they'll go, yeah, right. He'll be well, on the ship checking the lists. <laughs> you do have those manifests to go over you know from the meeting you didn't show up for <laughs> oh yes but i went to a very interesting other meeting so yes there is stuff to do hmm, lists good idea thanks all right uh let's go to sebastian what about you for the evening um i went back to my hotel room but i'm messaging lynn mm-hmm. uh, as well asking her if there will be another meeting. There, there's another meeting. Uh, they're going to have a meeting in two days. So after you guys leave, um, she would like you to attend, but she understands your obligation to your crew. Um, but she's also hoping that you maybe tell more people, you might be better to tell people about the sphere and its benefits too. So, and, and think about how it incorporates your faith. So um, she's encouraging, she's she's supportive of your, of your uh, lifestyle choice here. <laughs> whichever, way, whichever side you decide to go on. <laughs> Join our clever oh, okay. dog. We're cool with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't, I, I don't reply, but I, I send a message to mm. Cornelius and Captain, uh, telling about that. There will be another meeting, but only after we leave. Mm. Oh. Oh. Dayton. Let's go to Dayton. Dayton is actually waiting to see what Chandra wants to do. Like, if if, <laughs> if we're gonna go bust this guy out in the middle of the night, or, or <laughs> you know, yeah. if not, going back to the ship and just staying there. I want to talk to him. And okay, go with you then. Possibly bust him out. <laughs> so you okay? So you you want to go to the security station? Yeah. Okay. So you go to the security station in the evening there, and uh, there's like a people out there. You got a guy at the front desk goes, "Uh, can I help you with?" Oh, I was. I'm going to talk to one of the prisoners. You got a name? And uh, I can't remember if I gave you a name or not. Uh, you did. Yeah. Ernest, uh, Ernest Bowden. Bowden. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bowden. Oh, that guy has a nut. 
Uh, I've been trying to talk to him for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. well, and who are you? Uh, I'm the security officer for the um, the Libre. The oh, Verde Libre. Uh, do you? Uh, what's, and what business do you have uh, with uh, Bowden? Um. Well, I want to see what he has to say for himself because he's um, the only person here who seems like they've, they've had mental difficulty. Well, look, uh, I could put in a request with uh, the chief of security on that, but we don't just allow people to talk uh, to the prisoners uh, without, uh, unless you're their union rep or their lawyer, we're not going to let you, uh, we can't just let you walk on back there and talk to them and uh, disturb them some more. Um, but he's, uh, you know, he's been all right back there. He's doing better than he was a, a while back. So what, uh, what sort of, uh, traits did he display? Um, he had some early on, uh, really bad insomnia, uh, complained about some nausea and stuff like that too, but he seems to be doing a lot better, uh, these days, uh, and the like. But we're uh, we're keeping an eye on him, so don't worry about his well-being. We appreciate it. Uh, we got some great medical staff here. Uh, the, the, you guys just brought in those medical supplies. Yeah, they'll certainly help. Uh, so we, we appreciate your efforts here. But uh, not letting. You, uh, sorry, I can't let you through. No, oh, I understand. Uh, while we're talking, I'm just going to be casing this joint. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh, um, I'm gonna sneak in. You you uh, could you could probably uh, you can kind of see where they have their holding their holding area big in the back. It's not very big. It's like it can hold like mm-hmm. maybe like twelve people um, in individual cells. But you can see where the holding area is. Uh, but it's pretty slow. Honestly, it's a very slow uh, thing here. Um, but yeah, they're like uh, he's like yeah. Well, uh, is anything else I can help you with? Let me know. Uh, we're getting ready to close up for the night here. Okay. Uh, All right. Please go about your business. Uh, Dayton, you got something here? I don't know. I'm just thinking they could let right. me leave. Two options. Captain. Let's go to Captain. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking that my action might actually inadvertently help their uh, their <laughs> activities. Love it. Uh, so Beckett will be in the hotel sort of pacing back and forth, and then he'll send just a very simple message to... Um, to Captain Cody, to the chief of security, saying, can I see it again? <laughs> you get no response. How long do you want to wait for a response? All night. You don't get, you don't get a response. <laughs> okay, so you start waiting for a response, and uh, you're sitting in your room, just looking at your data terminal. Uh, let me go back to Chandra and Dayton. Uh, so I heard Ethan went back to the ship to sleep. Cornelius is doing the work on the ship, and, and maybe you try to get some rest. Sebastian, did you want to go? You went back to the hotel, right? Uh, took it yeah. easy. Okay. Oh, Chandra and Dayton, who are our wild cards over here, who I'm really enjoying. Um, <laughs> what, what what are the two of you going to do this evening? You're going to go back to the hotel, go back to the ship, or try to you know do a whole uh, do a whole thin Lizzie and have a breakout thing here. Well, Jailbreak or something. They say that they were closing up the security station soon, so. Yeah, it looks like they're going to like a skeleton crew. There's still people there. There's like a janitor, and there's like uh, going to be some security, like at least a pair of guards in there too. But they're looks like they're they're locking down for the night. Like, how advanced is their security? I mean, like, do they have good security gear here? What's it's respectable. I mean, they have cameras okay. on the front. There's cameras everywhere. Um, they do have motion detectors, stuff like that too. Um, you can probe their system real quick, and yeah. I'll use do that real quick. That's uh, what I it is yeah. beyond your capacity, Dayton, because you do not have the hacking talent. Yeah, yeah, that's what. It's so about. you're 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 a rank amateur at this. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's you, you. You could try, but you're also like uh, getting caught by the guy who seems to buy into this stuff. It ain't gonna be a, ain't gonna be funny there. The air is breathable here and everything. Well, oh. I mean, like th- things I was thinking because what I am good at is is like life support oh. systems. Is like doing something with the you know. Oh yeah, you can you can. Life support oh system. yeah, if you want to go fuck with their life support system, go go in the back of there and mess their AC unit or whatever they got. You're welcome to. That's a different story. Or just make it trigger an alert that's not real or something. Yeah. You, know, you want to call? Like you want to like trigger like a fire alarm or something like that? You can do that. Well, I, I I will yield to our chief of security. This, these are things I'm throwing out that we can potentially. You give them the you give them the universal belt or hand sign for pull the fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably something a little more you know. Subtle. Uh, a little more subtle, yeah. I don't think we should do anything tonight. Okay. Because we would want to be able to do whatever we 
decide to do and then leave immediately. Um, so. <laughs> By the way, I didn't mention that. Re- if you could not mention that recording to the captain, I appreciate it. Sebastian didn't exactly know I was listening in. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, no worries. I okay, mean, thanks. Captain sent it to us, so. Yeah, so it's all good, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good to know that that guy, I mean, you know, we essentially see that he reacted poorly to the sphere um, and it drove him in the other direction. Um, so it's good to see he wasn't just, uh, you know, some random um, pyromaniac or uh, yeah. <laughs> something like that. So, um, so yeah, I think tomorrow we, we really need to make sure what we're bringing uh, on our ship, um, and uh, and see if we're able to take any action about this spear. Okay, that's what I suggest. I'm gonna you... text Ethan with like a summary of our oh, okay. talk as well. That's right. cool. <laughs> um, I, I was real quick, Cornelius, you do your inspection, everything's fine, everything's great, seals are good, everything's on par, your whole team works well. Um, and you're welcome to sleep on the ship or sleep on sleep at the hotel, your choice. Yeah, so um, I was going to try and figure out if we have anything like um, explosive that, or that can be used as an explosive. Uh, you do there. You guys don't really have you have some stuff on this on it, but it's not enough to even do anything to what they have here on this planet. The planet does have once again, it is a mining operation there. You did pass on your way down those tunnels a, um, you know, demolition unit. Um, there is a whole, they do have quite a few explosives on the station, um, but they are under a lock and key security um, area. Um, let me go, uh, Ethan, did you have something real quick or you good or? I, just when I, I uh, hear from Dayton, mm-hmm. I'll um, you know reply back. So did you talk to the guy? No, no, we didn't get, we couldn't get in. So uh, I take it Chandra's not staging a prison break tonight. That would, that's the plan, apparently. I, I, you know, they gave him some options. <laughs> I think you guys said you were going to do it the next day or something like that. Or try to do, right before well, you leave. I'm, I'm open to doing it. Okay, next. okay. okay I, I add that. He's <laughs> open to doing it the next I'm day. Open. If we want to... <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't like to close down options. I like to open windows, especially ones in prisons. Um, all right. <laughs> um, all of you get some rest except for Beckett. Becca Davis, um, you're sitting there. You're waiting for the response. It's like three a.m. equivalent time. Probably. Oh, uh, oh, excuse me. Roll a d6 for me, please. Ooh, okay, all right. Hmm. Ooh, I got a six. Okay. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I like it. On the churn, that's actually uh, good. Higher rolls are actually no effect. <laughs> Um, no. So nothing, nothing, Aww. nothing. There's not going to be a weird <laughs> thing happen, but it, it, the thing's going to happen anyways. Um, it won't be worse. Uh, Cornelius, Sebastian, um, the, and then uh, Beckett, you have a waking version of this. Uh, you have like euphoric visions of things. Uh, it, you, you feel like a kinship with people around you. Um, you feel at home. A warmth come through your body. Um, you're shown like true meaning, uh, and it it, it 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 touches all parts of you. Um, Ethan, Chandra, and Dayton. Um, the three of you are. Uh, were you guys, you guys back on the ship? I think yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You're you're being. Um, you wake up to like alarms going off. Um, like, like literally or figuratively literally like your uh your like uh data pad mm-hmm. wake up alarm is going off and um it's been you're you've been sleeping for like you each one of the three of you overslept by like two hours mm. um That's... captain uh cornelius and sebastian uh you guys kind of come out of this out of this uh thing here and you can um, you, you kind of come out of your, your out of whatever state you were in, and uh, you can see that like there's um, uh, or actually you guys were awake ahead of this. Uh, 
you guys kind of see like there's alerts kind of popping up, automated alerts popping up on your data pad. So we're gonna, we're gonna, the other three of you are kind of out for a little bit, but the captain in the hotel room, Cornelius on the ship and Sebastian on the ship, uh, you, you see alarms going off almost immediately actually, uh, Captain, about five, about like 6 a.m. here for Captain Davis. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, alarms going off at 6 a.m. Uh, Captain Davis you will. Know, you can look at what they are. You can check look it out. Yeah, okay. check them out so first. It yeah. looks like there's uh, some of these alarms are like automated alarms. Um, some of them are indicating that there is um, a. Uh, like certain like dock procedures aren't being followed right now. Um, like it seems like there's like just little alerts, uh, but one of the alerts is actually coming from your ship, and it seems it, it seems like there's been an unauthorized entrance of the ship. Mm. All right, so Beckett will uh, like sit bolt upright and um, send a message to Chandra, and just say, "Report to the ship. Something's going on. I need your help." No response. Um. And you can see that Chandra's on the ship. You can see that Chandra, uh, oh. Ethan, and Dayton are all on the ship, but no response. Um, Cornelius, you're on the ship. And the last thing you guys remember is like a really loud sound that overwhelmed you. But then like it was pure euphoria. The other ones, you, you felt this like, you had this like horrible like nightmare um, of the sound like penetrating your bodies. But then it just, it just you just have horrible sleep with like weird uh, nausea and such. Um, the um uh yeah uh but you do see those alerts going off on the ship uh beckett who do you want to contact next on the ship uh if there's no response from chandra then ethan no response from ethan and then puts out just a ship-wide thing somebody report and like starts cornelius, running towards the ship cornelius and sebastian uh you guys get a emergency call from the captain ask uh saying like respond please uh status report. i respond straight away okay. i'm on the ship they're on the ship and like uh you can see that there's like um entrance uh to the uh excuse me to the ship has been breached like the, not breached but like blown open but like someone's entered the ship without authorization mm -hmm. you can pull up cameras or something like that really easily too uh, grab my gun. Okay. Grab your gun. Um, you, you you can see people entering the uh, the cargo, or they've entered through the cargo hold, and looks like they're going down to the machine shop in engineering. And the 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 ship is clocking about twelve people. Hmm. Uh, do you want to get visuals of them real quick? Yeah. Uh, they look like they're not armed. Maybe they have toolkits, uh, but they're not armed. You don't see any guns, rifles. Uh, maybe at most they have like a crowbar. Uh, Do Beckett. we recognize any of them? Uh, Beckett, you don't recognize these guys from anything, and they look like a bunch of schlubs in space. Uh, and uh, uh, Cornelius, um, give me a give me a scene test to see if you recognize any of these guys. I should look at the footage. And, it's, it's and it's Sebastian, uh, so you're at the hotel, and you kind of wake up to this alert. Uh, Beckett's requesting people to go back to the ship. Uh, what do you want to do? I go straight, running straight to the ship. You meet up with Beckett out in the hallway, um, and you guys are moving towards the ship. Uh, Corn and it's about like a 15, 20 minute uh, jog to the or the jog to the ship. It's pretty deep in there. Uh, what'd you get, Cornelius? Eleven. And if that's a success, two stun points. Uh, that was not a success. You need it. It's it's the footage ain't great. Uh, if you can, can you push that to a fourteen? Yeah, sure. All right. All right. Push it to a fourteen. Um, you actually recognize two of the individuals from the meeting yesterday. They were just kind of people in the in the crowd. No one you no one you talked to, but they were they were there. Right, I I let the captain know these are these are the the fans. The, no, <laughs> the, the, fans. the, the enthusi they're enthused. They're yes. enthused. The mm -hmm. ones who are filled by the the sphere yeah. and spheres. Well, then we can talk them down. They are reasonable people. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Sebastian and Beckett, as you are coming through the hallway, you can see that like security forces are deploying and moving around, but they're not going towards the docks. They're going towards like the administration area. You guys have passed this numerous numerous times. Uh, okay, uh, okay, okay. But I, I, I run to the ship and wait. Okay. Choose my home. Okay. So you, you two get to the outside of the docks. Um, you can see outside of the outside of the space where the. Um, 
uh, where the, the ship is docked. Um, you can see there's two people, just with toolkits. They don't have any weapons, they don't have any guns or anything like that too. They're just kind of standing there, kind of watching, just looking like they're blending in. Um, they have stations, they have suits for the station here, so they're clearly part of uh, New Luna Earthers. Um, and uh, Cornelius is making his way through the ship here. Uh, what are the uh, Captain and Sebastian, what do you want to do while you see these two guys just standing there at the, at the front ship? And they're not part of your guys' crew at all. Are they looking aggressive towards the, the crew? They're just standing there. They're just kind of they're just kind of talking and uh, just looking out. Hey, did you see what happened? Who is going on to our ship? Oh, hey. Uh, uh, Captain Davis, huh? Right? I, I saw you yesterday. I, mean, you, I, I heard about you yesterday. And yeah, and Sebastian, I met you yesterday. We were at the, we had the, we both grabbed the coffee at the same time. You recognize the guy, Sebastian. He was at the meeting yesterday with you guys. He's like, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. All right, brother. But uh, you infiltrated our ship. And, and oh. this is a, a very serious thing. Uh, we didn't. We don't invite uh, invade your house, and you're inviting our house. Oh, oh! Look, look! We're just trying to. Um, we're we're just. Uh, we need to. We need to grab some stuff off the ship real quick. Uh, but uh, it's okay. Like, please. Like, we don't. We don't want any trouble. We're just trying to make sure the but, uni the unity lasts. But this is our ship. What, what are you grabbing from here? Oh, we uh, would. Well, okay, so we'll go to Cornelius. Cornelius, um, you do pass several other, like I said, there's 50 people on the ship. Uh, do you want to stop at any of their bunks and wake them up or anything like that? And, and you do know I'll, that, like... I'll wake, I'll wake up our crew okay. as I go. Okay. So yeah. you first, you try to wake up uh, Chandra. You go to Chandra's uh, uh, bunk. Chandra's in there sleeping, and you try to wake up Chandra, nothing. Just completely passed out. Not, like, still living, breathing, no. I mean, you, you smack him around <laughs> a little bit, no wake up. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and you notice other members of the crew are sleeping, and they're not waking up through the alarms at all. And you even go down to like when you get to the, and even if you start going through through the galley, you can see there's people who have just like fallen asleep where they were standing. Awesome. Get off our ship! Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So you you run down, you start running down to the um through the cargo bay. You get to the cargo bay, the machine shop, and uh, you can see these people are uh they're coming out like they're doing. Looks like they're just doing work, and they're like. They're ignoring, there's like bodies down there where like the people that were working there fell asleep and they're just like sleeping. They're just not like, um, they're not waking up or anything like that. Um, but these guys seem to be going to work on the ship doing some like advanced engineering stuff. You're not really sure what they're doing, but they are they don't belong here. What are you doing? Get off this yeah. ship. They go, oh, uh, Cornelius, it, it's us. And like you, you recognize the one guy, his name is like Harry. And he goes, we, we met yesterday at the meeting. Remember? You recognize him. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Great, Harry. What are you doing to our ship? Uh, we, well, we were going to grab some of the fuel pellets here. Why? Well, we got fusion drive, we got fusion engines on, or fusion uh, reactors on the, on the station. We want to keep them powered for as long as we can go. We're, we're going to make we, something great here, uh, Cornelius. Can you feel it? Oh. And, and you, Cornelius, you kind of like take a second and you can, you feel a little more aware and almost, you almost feel like you can see through their eyes almost where they're coming what from. What are you building? What's the amazing thing you're building? I mean, they kind of take, they all kind of look around. They, they, they're kind of stunned by what you say. And they're like, this togetherness, this, this, this group, this love. But we gave you all our, we brought lots of pellets for you. Well, we're not we sure how long more? we're going to be here, but we all need to stay warm. And, and, and make sure those that have been asleep to the greatness that's coming that's coming are awoken to it and brought into that warmth. Um, go ahead and give me a um, give me a, <laughs> your choice of willpower, uh, self discipline. Yeah, give me self discipline. Are in the same Will, room? Willpower. Right, yeah. It. Are in the same oh, room? That's 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 not too me... bad. Okay. That's uh, seventeen. Yeah. Um, you take a second and like you can see clearly through this. These guys are looting your ship. Honestly, is all they're really doing, and uh, they are like they view it as their position is that they're gonna like keep this colony alive as long as they can for the supplies they need, and they're doing it for the greater good as their position. But that's bullshit. And as far as your uh, more objective approaches, yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Uh... 
not sure how far I should go now, um, but I have a gun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to draw it on him? Oh, it's already in my hand. So I'm, okay. I, I look, I look at my gun. I look at them. So it's all good with your kumbaya shit. Yeah. Get off this ship. Okay. So you start trying to, you start trying to like, you suddenly start. Um, give me a. Um, we we'll to check here. Uh, give me a Constitution stamina test. Hmm. He shows poorly, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I see those eyes. All right, so that's a, that's an eleven. Oh man, what do I need? <laughs> uh, you would need like a thirteen. I'd put it that. I yeah, but that, that's that's fine. Right. That's right. fine. I can spend Doable. some. Uh, so, you, so you, you get kind of nauseous and like you like you start like pushing back on that good feeling and all of a sudden you're overwhelmed by this like illness, this sickness is pulsing through your body. But you uh, you kind of see through it and uh, do you want to fire a warning shot at these dudes? Do you want to pop one of them? What do you want to do? Uh, warning shot, I okay. think is... So you fire a plastic... Not on my ship! Well, you fire a plastic <laughs> bullet. The, you fire, fire a plastic bullet. Uh, let me go back to uh, Sebastian and Beckett. The two of you come through the ship and you hear a gunshot go off and you come into a room and you can see um, Cornelius with his gun pulled on like, looks like 10, 10 or so uh, of these of the crew members of the station. Um, you pick up on it pretty quick, uh, Beckett. It looks like they're trying to turn down the reactor on the ship and extract as many fuel pellets as they can get. Oh no, hold on. What is happening here? This is our ship. Well, what? The captain, the captain is here. Uh, but you, you surely understand what we're doing here, trying to unify us all. You know what leadership is. You know what it is when a crew works as one. That's all we're trying to bring to New Luna. Can you not feel it? Uh, Beckett, you do feel that euphoria? I can feel this, and we must bring it out to the stars. This ship will bring it out. In due time, but it is for it is for <laughs> it is for Director Kestel to determine. Our, our, he will make the wise decisions that will lead us forward. And you notice that the guy said Director Kestel, not Assistant Director Kestel. Mm-hmm. Do, and like, do I have that sort of internal thing, like I should follow Director Kestel, or is it uh, really still it's just... It's more that you realize that the people, the security forces were charging the administration station, yeah. were doing some sort of um, management change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll put it in nice terms. <laughs> it's uh, political. Yeah. This I is understand. Why we need to destroy it. They're I touring. Believe... Sorry. No, sorry. But they, 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 I... they take a second. I, we did not realize this. This is this man, and you feel them. You feel the understanding they have before they even say it. This man will be the. You will be our our uh, word to the stars, Captain Davis. You you are it. You will and be he... our herald. Davis puts his hand on Sebastian's shoulder and says. We can be these heralds. Hello, oh, boss back. They are not this way. Not this way. We should just uh, solve the situation. These people are not part of the crew. This is not the right thing to do. Uh, Sebastian, make a uh, constitution stamina test. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, 8, 5, 13. Okay. That's good. That's good. You're good. You, you, feel okay. a little, you feel a little nauseous, but you, you stave it off. Um, the rest of the crew, the other three, you wake up uh, like you feel achy. Uh, you feel mm. like really bad sleep and alarms are going off. Your, your alarms are going off for your to wake up. But you can also see there's been like a breach in the um, of the ship. Like security was, was breached. All this stuff. Uh, check I... Right. I checked to find out where the breach is um, and if there is a weapon at hand. There's I a weapons locker. There's a weapons yeah. locker. Uh, I, you would, you would get... need Ducas's, uh permission to access it. Uh, right. Well, then I get I get Chandra on the um, the, the comms. So, and I'm like, Chandra, there's, there's a security breach. I need you down at the weapons locker and we need to get down there now. On my way. You guys all meet up right outside the bunks and everything like that show you arm up. Um, you can see on your security readout, uh, Chandra, that like the captain and a bunch of people are down in machine shop. Um, it looks like a lot of the other crew are still asleep. It looks like some of them are maybe like vomiting in their sleep. 
Um, Dayton, you wake up, you, you come out, you can see like them. Uh, do you want to arm yourself, Dayton, also? Yes, but I'm also checking uh, it, the like internal life support and such. See what if it's, there's it's any fine. sign of anything it, it affecting anyone. It wasn't. It was a security breach, not like a breach of the hall. So it looks like someone like uh, forced open the the airlock doors. Right, but I'm talking about like wh why everybody's sick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, is there any uh, gas? Nothing's or anything? coming back from the. Nothing's coming back from the uh, life support systems. You actually check those real quick. There's no like uh, aberration amount of like bacteria or viral infections in the air. Uh, Gotta pump a stimulant in to uh, wake, we're trying to wake everyone up. up <laughs> That's a little more advanced. That would that would take a. They don't just keep stimulants in the air on tap. Uh, sure, it's not that kind of <laughs> ship. Uh, I know. <laughs> that should be a mod oh, next, uh, supplement. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, stimulants. Yeah, we get everyone just high and. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but yeah, you um. Happened. Hide the whole team. All right, you guys start moving down. Uh, so Cornelius, you're hearing, uh, and so Sebastian and Cornelius, two of you are kind of like, the, like some of these euphoric feelings off of you. Uh, you were able to feel these people's like presence and everything like that too, but they are just fundamentally stealing from you. And the captain seems like we could go forward and do more with these guys. And they're actually starting to put stuff back once the captain asks. Well, as long as they're putting stuff back, I, I you know, that's, uh, that's, that's cool. But, uh, going forth with this <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm kind of pacified nonplussed oh. yeah. I if they are starting to put things back yeah. he starts to help them okay. they he's, take the he's time helping push pellets in and yeah. they, they put the pellets back in they kind of set everything up and uh you you get a uh, you get a call uh, from now labeled Director K Kestel, and it's and it, he pops up and he says, Captain, you're this is this is amazing. We we have a way forward, and you are a part of it. Director, I hope that your takeover of this station was peaceful because the orb does not want us to fight no it does not that's why it not the unbelievers were knocked unconscious and taken out that we we were chosen and uh the other three members come down to the machine shop you see like these like strangers like messing with the stuff putting stuff <laughs> back together you see the captain you see cornelius with his gun sebastian's like not having this either um and you have three of your members with full arms there um, and you can see that the captain's like talking to someone on the comms. Captain, what's going on? A misunderstanding, Everett. Everything is good. We have figured it out. They were trying to loot the ship, but they understand that we have to leave. That we have to share with the rest of our people, the goodness that can come. Dayton, uh, yeah. uh, make a make a seeing test for me real quick, or a hearing test. Make a hearing test because you got the hearing. <laughs> yep, I'm liking this. Not as good as touching, uh, but it's good there. <laughs> and fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So you're, you're sitting there watching the captain do this, and you can see on on his on his data pad, he's talking to now director Kestel. Right. As he speaks, you can see Director Kestel mouthing the same words. Ooh, ooh! <laughs> even I hear, just... even hear him say it a little bit lightly. Like there, it's not. It, you, you don't see him saying it before he says it. You see him saying it. You hear him saying it with him. If Chandra and Ab and Ethan are with me, right? Yes. So I will point this out to them right away. They're, they're talking at the same time. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we can get these people off the ship. I mean. We, yeah, this is a... Is, should we just cut off Kestrel's head and hope that takes care of this? Or, uh, we think can, can turn off the air. Well, the air and turn off. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're not in space, right? No, you, there's so, no atmosphere. No. But there is no atmosphere? No. Oh, they can leak out the air. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, let it out. There's some security. There, 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 there are numerous uh, stages yeah. to that, but yeah. Um, you guys, uh, you guys gotta stand there for a second. Um, they put it back, and as they do, they all kind of just file out. 
uh, and they they are help, they're grateful to the captain for the opportunity now to like to message him. And uh, a few of them stop and ask that like the captain they go, Captain, can we come with you and be part of this this great work? And uh, like how many? Like two. Like, just two of them are asking. Just, to come if, yeah, you got room for him. I mean, there's there's always room on the crew of the Verde Libre. Ah uh, ah. Uh. Yes, yes. Um, In the airlock. <laughs> um, <laughs> Chandra, uh, can you find uh, berths for our two new friends here? Well, when we leave, I can. But let's um, let's get everything going first. Yeah, we got a lot to get years. together before we can get going. Um. You you get a you get a uh, captain you get a ping uh, from uh, Doctor Kale. Uh, she's she's requesting like a direct uh, conversation with you. Sure, pops up. I'll just take it like right in the yeah. middle of the hallway, yeah. not even yeah. And she goes, "Hey, wh- what the hell is going on here? They're not letting me on the ship." <laughs> she like coughs up a little bit. They're not letting me on the ship. You got these two guys out here saying like. Only the the believers get to leave. What the hell is this? And uh, he'll say, "There was a bit of confusion. Apparently, your colony is having a change of leadership, but it is all good. You will come with us, and you will share the experiences that we have all had on this colony." Please tell them that the captain says you should come to. All of you witness this. Oh, yeah. Sebastian! I mean, that's Sebastian. <laughs> oh, I'm not waiting for Sebastian. All right, Sebastian, what are you doing? You, you hear this? Yeah. Uh, when uh, we reached the area where Tornadoes was, the beginning, uh, did we see any anyone unconscious? Um. Yeah. There's, there's been a few of the a few of the crew have been unconscious. And on the way here, you actually, now you think back about it, you, you thought maybe there was like sleeping off a hangover, but like there was people uh, that were kind of unconscious here and there on the on the docks. It's maybe like 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 maybe one in three half of them or something like that, not too many of them. Okay, so we saw people unconscious everywhere. Uh, yeah, that's where the we're guys right. talk, they talk about uh, non-believers mm-hmm. uh, having something. And then I'm just uh, <laughs> linking it all together mm. uh, and now I'm, I'm feeling kind of confused but uh, I'm uh, I look in terror at the captain and I say captain Osmac this is just not right there is something very wrong about this what do you mean it's so peaceful it's so might be peaceful for you, boss man. But remember, the the Church of Eros uh, teaches us that we are all equal. But that that thing is not considering people equal. So it has not to do with the teachings of the Church of Eros. Uh, part uh, do I know that part of our career was unconscious as well? Some of them still are. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm um, going to do is tend to them. Okay. As my medic, too. So, so uh, I say uh, so, some people are treated differently with uh, by this fear. And this is just not right. And those, those people who are defending it, they, they don't know what they're saying. They don't realize the how how serious the situation is. No, the the people who do not feel it yet will come. They will understand, and Captain, then we all be the same. Captain, listen to yourself. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear what you sound like? A, a a group together, knowing how to live in peace together. 
How do you not want this? Captain, you're not talking about a group. You're not talking about a crew. You're talking about a herd, a hive. You're talking about a group of people who are just mindless. And and he reaches out and will like put a hand on your shoulder and say, it is not that. It is. That says, uses the term unbeliever about others is by definition a political tool and a force to be reckoned with and subdued. No, 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 you're twisting it. It's not, it's not that. Captain, I think you need to get some rest and think about it. Punch him in the face. And, <laughs> and, and, okay. uh, and, and Dayton, Dayton, you see that on the, oh you can my. see on the captain's terminal, you can see Rachel Kale, the doctor who's picked up, like screaming into the thing, what, what, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? Whatever's going on. She's really like, panicky about stuff. Um, I'll, 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 this is a dead to rights thing, because I was going to say you sucker punch him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, <laughs> just uh, roll, roll me some, uh, give me some, uh, you knock him out, dude. Like, I'm not going to have you. Punish it. You just knock him out. Beckett's there. not a fighter at all. <laughs> yeah, there, there's like just, it's definitely like a. No, he's, he's got striking style. So yeah, you you knock yes. the cast now. The you know he, right. he kills over. Yeah, we we need to rescue the doctor and uh, get the hell off this planet. What's that? Wait, where is the doctor? She's like, Outside. you want to grab the terminal and talk to her? Yeah. Okay. She goes, she goes uh, uh, Dayton, right? She's like, look, I'm outside the docks. Like these guys, they're like all like hold up around. They're not letting anybody leave the station. Can you, like, can you guys get a clear path for me? Get the hell out of here. We're on it. All right. Sean, sure. We need to get her out. That's what I just said. All right. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I was talking to her. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What do you need me to do, security boss? Yeah. I think we also, well, at least I need to do, um, Take care of, um, uh, not Beckett. Beckett's the captain. Uh, oh, you took care of him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the director, the, the okay. new director. The new director is, like, apparently in the administration office, which is now heavily secured. Yeah, you're uh, not getting anywhere near him. Yeah. So You're taking a tour. All right, doctor first. All right. Um, any other yep. um, unbelievers? So, so she she sends over her her thing. She's not that far from the ship. It's like a straight run for her. But she kind of indicates that, like, and you can see from the outside cameras, from the dock cameras, that there's, like, a variety of people out there that are, like, lined up and preventing, kind of doing crowd control. Um, only a few of them are wearing security outfits. Most of them are just kind of, like, dock workers or just workers or whatever it is. Um, but they're preventing people from leaving. Um, and you can see that, like, two of them are armed with, with guns. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, we probably have no. nothing for security on here. The ships. I mean, we can probably oh, get the ships not armed. No, I mean, like even like grenades or you, you have assault um, rifles or uh, side arms at best. You have side yeah, arms and you have a, and, and you have a few rifles. Uh, but like you, uh, the only Ooh. person that even has remotely combat armor is like Chandra has like a set yeah. of like security armor, but that's about it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I, th I think we should calmly walk in because they're trying to keep people from coming out and then. We probably have to shoot our way out. Okay. And just yell, run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so, so, you, so you come out through the the uh, cargo airlock. Um, all these guys left. They kind of let you guys uh, head off. And the, there's like the two believers down the ship. They're wherever. Um, and you can see Dayton's like, uh, talk to some of the the people taking care of them. Um, you you can see these people. They aren't looking at the ship at all. They're not even looking at your, your direction. They're more mm -hmm. trying to keep people out. And I was like, why can't I leave? Like, what the hell? I want to go on my job. And they're like, you know, you have to, you know, uh, this is off limits. All, that's all they're saying is off limits, off limits. Very much the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, if you, uh, how do you want to deal with this? Um, well, I guess we do have the advantage of being behind them right now. And they don't notice you at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'll take care of the two guys on the ship if you just so we don't have them behind us if you want. I'll show them to their quarters. 
Mm -hmm. You you would be able to uh, knock them unconscious in their quarters. You would that is a, a viable tactic for the life support system. If you want, to. I don't even, even worry about that. I'm just, just going to put them in and lock them. Lock them in. Change the code. Right. Um, do I know if anyone else on the crew is handy in a situation like this? Cornelius ain't bad. Okay. All right. Uh, why don't you and I go take care of the guys with the guns? Um, and sure. uh, just tell me which way. If we can let this crowd break out, that'll create a lot of problems for them. So here's my question to you: Are you gonna try to sneak up on them, or are you gonna try to like just drop them and then tell everyone to run? Um, I'm gonna or sneak different... in cold cock. Okay. All right. Guy. So uh, it's not really a problem. It's sort of noise. You guys get behind them pretty easily. And uh, they're standing there directing it. They don't have their weapons drawn or anything like that, too. They're just like, keep it up, you know, whatever. Um, and you make a loud cocking noise behind their ears. And uh, one of them turns around and looks at you. And is like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my pistol butt to knock him unconscious. All right, so you smack the one guy in the face pretty hard. Uh, the other guy uh, pulls a, he goes to pull his gun. Cornelius, you are ready here. If you if you want to roll a shot, roll an attack roll for me real quick. I'll see if you can grab, uh, drop him. Yeah. Ah. Right. So, so, 14, 16. Okay, that's good enough to hit. Mm -hmm. so you, you pop the dude. Uh, give me a damage roll real quick uh, with the pistol. Um, and you got pistol stock because you're close range here, but. I'm going to say, okay, no, no. all right, so you, you go up and you pop him. Uh, the other guy gets stunned and he, he kind of falls over. Uh, a few of the other guys start kind of crowding around you. They start now making make a circle around you. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see the doctor that was there. She run, makes a run for it, um, mm -hmm. for the ship. Uh, do you guys want to try to, like, fight these guys or do you want to run? Um, do we have auto or do we only have... No, you have, like, you have, like, you have your handgun. It's a semi-automatic. And the right... Yeah. The no, right I mean, no, talking about the the scientists that we're supposed to bring two scientists with us. Yeah, the other scientists you haven't heard back from, uh, yeah, but you remember seeing you remember seeing him at the meeting. He's got yeah. kind of money. <laughs> yeah, but but he's but he's uh, he's basically not here. No, he's not here at all. No, yeah, he, right. he's really bad at keeping appointments, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should just run. I, I venture the idea. Uh, run. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm good at. Uh, close in pistol fighting, so I'm gonna, you know, shoot one guy okay. and break through, and then head back to the ship. Okay. Um, uh, you I'm guys, basically just legging it. All right, so yeah. you guys, you got, you pull your guns. These guys, uh, they kind of rush at you, uh, Chandra and Cornelius. Uh, you are, do you want to use lethal force on them to stop them? I'm willing to use lethal force. Yeah. You, you actually end up uh, dropping a few of these guys. You don't necessarily kill them, but you definitely like hurt them pretty bad. Um, they're not armed. They're not even trying to pick up other guns, but they seem like locked in on stopping you. But you, mm -hmm. you they're not armed, so you guys clearly uh, beat, beat them in the fight. Um, and you guys get on the ship. Uh, do you want to tell Ethan to freaking fire it up? <laughs> I, I have got everything ready to go, basically. Yeah, let's go. You guys uh, force do a force undock of the uh, Verde Libre as you leave here with your captain unconscious. Uh, take out, take out a pretty good chunk of their berth out. Not like just not open the airlock or ripping it open, but like you take a pretty good portion of it out. Um, the the Verde Libre leaves uh, leaves the orbit. Uh, and there's no pursuit. There's no attack ships coming after you. Or you have a you do get a you get a hail, Ethan, from the attack ship they have on patrol. Do you mm -hmm. want to respond to it? No, I ignore it. Jared, do you want to respond to it? They're not like locking onto. They're not pursuing. They're just like they're like. No. I'll take no, it. I don't. I don't particularly feel uh, like talking. Hey, uh, this is Captain Reynolds um, uh, of the uh, of the new Luna new Luna Striker. Um, hey, uh, no one down there is responding to us. What the hell is going on down there? Uh, well, my our best guess is that um, that alien artifact that you've been messing with uh, has been affecting people's minds, and now a cult has uh, has overthrown the director, uh, and now Kestrel thinks he's the director um, and uh, it's a bad scene. They're trying to divide people into believers and unbelievers um, and uh, we left. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, Verde Libre, repeat? 
Um, <laughs> the, 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 guy, the guy kind of stalks off. So, um, yeah. but we're gonna we're gonna end it on that actually on on Ooh. on them kind of uh, being in orbit and having kind of a weird thing. So we'll we'll end on that because we're at our time here. Um, but but well, what happens? When I wake up, am I still taking a that, that's, that's really That's really up to the imagination of the watcher to determine whether or not they let you wake up. Um, but like we'll, we'll, we'll end it on that at our 5 o'clock time, everyone. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, yes, absolutely. Did you guys have an okay yeah. time? Yeah. No. Good. It was okay? That was great. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Had a great time. That was fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, great. Absolutely. It's a great adventure. That, that is stop and, and thank Sebastian for giving us this kind of fun structure to play around with. Here, Sebastian, here. thank you very much. Um, I, you know, I got to tell you, this is a really cool opportunity to, to be on the same screen and share some time with some amazing creators from all over the world. Uh, uh, and uh, you guys all inspire me. I look at your guys' work. Uh, I Before I started my own stream for The Expanse, I watched like eight other streams <laughs> um, to see kind of what I liked and, you know, and see what I wanted to pick from and everything like that too. So... You guys are all people I've interacted with, and I appreciate your time. Um, check everyone out. Um, let me put the link, the link for everyone again, into the chat, and uh, you can go. Oh, that's actually my, that's actually my links. I need to check. I have a different link for it, which is uh, this one here. You can go find everyone that right there. Um, everyone, the last words before we leave for the night. Um, I just want to thank you for. Thank you for our effort. Yeah, the master to organize all the stream, to study the, the story, adjust the structure. Uh, it was amazing. I, I didn't think uh, it could be run as a one shot because it can go very deeply. Mm -hmm. right? uh, but it was great. Thank you. And thank you for the invitation as well. It's great to be here. Uh, there is uh, album from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, America, first time. <laughs> Uh, meeting and the guys from Green Rooney. It's, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Our pleasure. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Thanks, John. Oh. Thanks, uh, Guilherme. Um, thanks, all of you. I mean, it's creating a great game, a great adventure, and running the game in such a great way. So, yeah, mm. this, yeah. Is, yeah. this is awesome. more than, the, yeah. <laughs> super, super fun. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Oh. I'm glad you guys had a lot of fun. Uh, and I told, I told Ian I'd pay him back uh, for the bet. I owed him a game. Um, I feel like so he's running from me a few times, so that's cool. And Merrick, once again, I'll see you guys around. Chris, an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Steve, an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Everyone, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, and I'll see you uh, all later. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Let me go ahead and okay. kick out. Play the expanse. Play the game.